Okay, so you think you can hear me now, Gwen? Awesome. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. This is the September uh, 2020 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of East Peoria. Um, we're going to start the meeting off with a roll call, but before we do that, uh, we do have a pretty packed agenda, uh, but we will give everybody an opportunity to speak on an item if they wish to. Um, we'll try to keep track of if we've got people out in the hallway or not. I think right now everybody's in here, uh, but we'll certainly make sure that, that when we present a case, uh, what happens is a petitioner presents the item, the zoning board asks questions, and then after that we open the floor to anybody that wants to speak for or against a case. So we'll do that, repeat that for each of the nine cases we have tonight. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with roll call. Okay, go ready? ahead and call the roll when you're ready. Dino Ori. Here. Don Tippett. Here. Ed Zosky. Here. Gina Driscoll. Here. Belinda Young. Here. We have a quorum. And we do have one new member with us tonight, uh, Mr. Tippett. Welcome. All right. Uh, we need somebody to approve the minutes from our last session. I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second that motion. Okay. To get those two. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, okay, we're going to go ahead with uh, the first case, uh, 20A. 22, this is a petition of the City of East Peoria to amend Title V, Chapter 8, Section 2 of the East Peoria City Code addressing special uses in conservation and residential and state district zoning. I believe Ty is going to speak on it. Would you stand up and identify yourself to the public? Ty Livingston, City of East Peoria. Okay, and hold up your right hand. Sorry to tell the truth, the whole truth will be got. I do. Go ahead and explain. So the, the code change that we have in front of you tonight really is setting the table for the second case. Uh, so this is by no means approving any particular case. It's just uh, amending the code uh, to allow for that use to be considered by the, the board and the city council. Um, the proposal has to do with, um, and, and for lack of better terminology, uh, tree farming was what was identified. Um, but the, the special use would have some limitations to it, and it speaks to uh, defining tree farming. Uh, shall be the felling, harvesting, and minimal processing of trees on the zoning lot or lots upon which this activity is being conducted. Uh, the zoning lot or lots upon which the tree farming activity is to be conducted must have an uh, area of not less than 10 acres. Uh, principal structure uh, can be used for tree farming operations and may be constructed on a zoning lot being used for the tree farming activity, so it has to be a related uh, structure to that activity. Uh, and then it would say that uh, these activities must be conducted in compliance with a forestation plan approved by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, IDNR, or other similar entity. So it, it's um, I think that uh, you know you hear the terminology tree farming, and some may think of uh, you know a Christmas tree farm or something like that, and um, that's really not what this proposal is uh, addressing. But this would be a code change uh, that, if approved by the council, uh, that would facilitate the ability of this next case to be considered and, and reviewed in, um, at, a, at a future date. Okay, so. Right. It looks like nothing under 10 acres will be allowed to tree farm in the city of East Korea. That's correct. Okay. Questions? Uh, I guess we can start with Gina. Um, on the 10 acres, I don't know if we need to reword it, but I mean, they need to be 10 contiguous acres. Not sure of the word, contiguous. but adjacent contiguous. to each other. Contiguous. Yes. Contiguous. We can, we can certainly add that verbiage. I have no other um, actual issues with the ordinance change. Uh, 
I mean, this is not the part I see some issues with, so that's all I have. All right, thank you, Ed. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that change, and I think that make it uh, a better, better change. I'm, okay, Don, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. No, I don't have a question. And Belinda. I have, have no questions. questions. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, is there anybody here that wants to either speak for or against the petitioner? Seeing none, we will go on to our second case. 20 SU 23 petition of Derek and Holly Grievings for a special use to allow tree farming on property located off Grim Lane. That's pin 1124305004. Uh, is Derek and Holly here? Are either one going to speak? Just one? All right. You need to step up. Okay. Identify yourself, please, and, and your home address. Uh, yes, good evening. My name is Derek Grieving. Um, our home address is 2 Hawthorne Cove in Wharton, Illinois. Okay, you raise your right hand. You saw it. You saw it. Tell the truth. I hope you're the guy. Absolutely. Yes. And you can. Uh, go ahead and uh, tell us what's going on. All right. Uh, members of the board, really appreciate you, your time this evening. Allow us to talk a little bit about an, an uh, exercise that actually started almost a decade ago. Uh, before I do, I just want to introduce my wife, Holly Greening, is here as well. Um, so we are representing uh, the property that is listed uh, for special use. Uh, and I want to get started tonight uh, and address something right away in terms of tree farming that Ty was alluding to earlier. Uh, farming is defined uh, as the activity or business of growing trees and raising livestock. In this traditional sense that most people conjure, um, we're not really here to talk a lot about tree farming, okay? Um, that is but a very small bit of this request. That doesn't mean you won't hear words like farm, crop, or harvest in the discussion. And in the next few minutes, I'd like to provide some context. All right, so uh, Glenn, working the slides? Yeah. Yep, if you would go to the uh, yeah, please, please. Um, so unfortunately, neither uh, of these individuals could be here tonight. Um, I, I have provided some contact information for, for the individuals and the agencies that we've been working with uh, really since uh, uh, 2011 timeframe. Uh, the, the first one, Scott Wallace, as a district conservationist here locally. Um, his predecessor, Tim Malone, just recently moved away. Um, but but uh, his letter is, is in, in this slide deck, and I also have a copy of that letter, should you want to, uh, to review that in more details. Um, Stacy Lindemann from the, the uh, National Wild Turkey Federation uh, is the other person, a forester out of Shelbyville, Illinois, <coughs> that we've worked with on our uh, forest stewardship plan, and we'll get into those details in just a moment. So if there's any questions I can't answer this evening, uh, please feel free. I have uh, requested that these two individuals take questions from you, the board, from members of the community. Uh, the notes have uh, the contact information, and please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to them. Um, yeah, first question. Uh, access to the property, is that only from the subdivision? Uh, correct. Today there is a road uh, access off the southern ed edge of the cul-de-sac, Brennan Court. And how wide is that? Uh, I, how wide is that? Um, the actual road opening? Uh, yeah, or the lot side. It looked rather narrow uh, to me. Um, so, so I do not know what the size of the road is, uh, but it, there is a variance uh, of, that has that information documented on it that I'd be glad to, uh, to get a hold of. Okay. Matter of fact, I have a, go ahead, I'm sorry. And you're going to put a building back there. How far is this going to be back of the uh, of the of the drive entrance? Um, yeah, actually. So um, if we could, Lynn, could you go to the very last slide? <laughs> I'm not anticipating this question <laughs> this early. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> this is a view uh, overlay view. Excuse me, I'm talking to the microphone. Uh, this is an overlay view of our property as well as the access from Brennan Court. Uh, and shown, uh, there is uh, quite several hundred feet length of driveway coming off of Brennan Court. 
uh, asphalt to start turns to road milling uh, that both we and uh, Illinois American Water use to access the properties uh, down in this location. There's, of course, is the sanitation uh, plant. So the building is going to be approximately 200 feet from the residential area. That, that was my question. Uh, actually, about 100 yards is the closest house okay. to the building. So, yeah, if you take that, there's 100 feet, and then there's actually another 100 yards or so. So actually, I guess it's a little over uh, uh, 100, 100 yards, but uh, about 400 feet to the closest property yeah. from the proposed structure. Is it going to house the material that you harvest with? Uh, per, per, yes, yes. Uh, although I would say 95% of the what we do with the equipment is actually uh, eliminating invasive species from the property to improve the habitat. Yeah, I mean, how are you going to harvest the logs? Are you going to have a log skitter back there? Or? No. Uh, no. Or how do you get the logs out? No, we have a uh, four-wheel drive tractor, <clears throat> a compact tractor, um, that we will use with basically a uh, skidding fork on the back of the three-point hitch. Uh, and if that I, will get them out of the valleys or the lower areas? Um, so that's one piece of equipment we, we can use. The other piece of equipment is one we acquired in late 2014, which is a small, basically a, a tracked skid steer. Um, and that is the, the piece that we go to if we need to pull stuff out of the waterway. Yes. Well, quite small equipment to get big lugs out with. So, sorry? I said that sounds like small equipment to get big logs with. Oh, it's a 12,000 pound machine and on tracks. Uh, I haven't met one yet I couldn't pull out. Oh, okay. <laughs> doesn't mean it doesn't exist, you know. Um, okay, I think that answers my questions. How about Ed, you want to? Oh, my questions. Um, so you're not sure how wide, excuse me. You're not sure how wide the easement is. Is that an easement? Uh, correct. Talking about? Correct. Yeah. But you don't know what the width of the easement is. Uh, it's, it's documented in, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head um, how wide it is. We need to know that. Yeah, this does not show it. I do not, uh, I do not have a view of, like, of the actual road dimensions. Um, but those were documented when the... Yeah, it should be documented on your, on your stuff, yeah. Um, another question. Sure. You said that it was a 300 yards from the other property? Yeah, three, yeah 300 yards, 400 feet. So it's over 300 yards. To the nearest house, yes. To the nearest house. Yes, sir. Okay. That's 300 feet of their property or your property? Uh, a little bit of both. It's 100, 100 feet of mine and 300 feet of theirs. Okay. 300 yards or 300 feet? No, no, no. 300 feet of theirs, 100 feet of mine. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. How about Don? Yeah, I have questions on the, um, again, the, the access on, on Brennan there. What is the, what's the anticipated frequency of uh, trucks going in and out of there? Uh, so, great question. Can we go to uh, slide? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, activities. There we go. Thank you. So, these are my best. These are my best estimates. I'm sorry, I'm not talking okay. to the microphone. Uh, in terms of what we do uh, and what we plan, what we've already been doing and what we plan to do moving forward. Um, in, in terms of trucks going in and out of there, so so today we use and I'll, we got some pictures in here if you'd like. Uh, they may have been in that material as well. Um, of a, uh, a dually that pulls a uh, approximately 40-foot gooseneck to haul the skid steer and the tractor mm -hmm. um, into or down to, I should say, this property uh, to do the maintenance work. Um, that's the activity that, to be very frank, uh, not, not just uh, avoiding going in and out of the neighborhoods, uh, but to make my life easier. And, and more more efficient in terms of hauling it in and out uh, is why I'm here and requesting a special use to put a building on the property. Did that answer your question? So, so you're 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 going to be taking logs in and out or out, correct? No. No, you are not. No, I'm not going to okay. take logs in and out from the property. Okay. No. No. At most, what we would do is when there is a timber harvest, uh, we would uh, pull the trees that the stewardship plan says to pull. Pull, I mean, drop, fell, 
and we would process those trees if they are if they are worthy. So by that I mean uh, they're designated as crop trees, even though it's not our intention to <laughs> become uh, uh, foresters ourselves, right? And and make a profit off of lumber that's ultimately milled from those trees. So so the only other thing I'll say that. We have to gain, I would say, from all of this is uh, some lumber and enjoyment of the wildlife. Are you okay with that? Or yeah, that's good. Okay, uh, how about Belinda? Does she have any questions? I did, I just had one question, and that was, um, what about noise as far as neighbors? I know you said you're quite a ways away uh, with the tractors and equipment, and then when you're processing the trees, what's that gonna sound like for them? Yes, very good question, Belinda. Uh, so are you, you're seeing the slides that uh, are up on Glenn's computer? That's I am there? not, but I do have the uh, brochures, the pamphlets. <coughs> Okay, well, I, I was going to say, I don't know if you had all this detail when I printed this stuff a couple of months back, so I apologize. Yeah. But, but basically what, um, what we've been doing since uh, 2014 is we've been using uh, a chainsaw at a noise level of 125 decibels and the skid steer, which has a backup alarm on it, uh, and that is at 107 decibels. So we've been doing this activity for approximately the last five, five and a half years. And the thing that I, I try to, to easily articulate to folks when they ask us about this is, um, if you haven't heard me out there yet, uh, you won't hear me out there moving forward. Okay. Does, it, does that That's answer? That's all I have. Okay. Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. And the, yes. You're welcome. All right. Um, I had one more question. Uh, sure. Uh, oak and uh, walnut trees require, what, 30 to 50 years to reach harvest size? Uh, yes, once you harvest this out, uh, what are your plans for the land after you remove the valuable trees? Yeah, great, great question. So there is no goal to remove the valuable trees. Um, the goal is to effectively, if we if we were to harvest anything, we would be we would have replanted that uh, probably in the neighborhood of a decade prior. So you talk about oaks. One of the things that I uh, wanted to mention here tonight is that we in the last three years have planted approximately 115 swamp white oak and red oak trees and these would be passed on to your siblings i assume in the future or something um the property long after you and i are gone that would be the plan yes all right thank you very much <laughs> that, yes well, go ahead and have a seat if you like okay does anybody uh I, well, wait, did you have another have i'm sorry <laughs> I got a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, so uh, the size of the easement, I was there. Um, it looks very narrow regardless of how big it is. Do you have any plans to change that, um, make it more stable other than just the gravel, um, make it larger? Um, n no, I, we don't. Uh, and really that's because we haven't had any uh, struggles getting in there at this point. Um, again, our vehicles, the, the dually pickup with the uh, gooseneck trailer uh, is approximately 70 feet long. Uh, and so if you think about most semis, for example, if, if that was ever an issue or a concern, again, I'm not looking to have a semi uh, on the property other than to perhaps deliver the building, if approved, to do so. What, uh, where will the, I think it's a dump truck? Will, uh, will, yes. Where will that be used? Uh, that would be used on the property to to move either material or timber on the property alone by itself but today it's hauled in and out of the property because i don't have a storage location for it and unfortunately uh, last spring i had some stuff that i left out there uh get vandalized so gotcha Thank you. um security for the site speaking of that um, some yeah. of the neighbors from the highland hills area have voiced some concerns that um, at night, there are four-wheelers and dirt bikes down there. Yes, ma'am. That's an issue you're aware of? It's a, been an issue since the day I walked on the property. And I, before I actually bought it, I, I saw some of those folks uh, out there when we were ourselves touring the property. Um, 
uh, I try to tell everybody, uh, unfortunately, um, if I see you out there, if you've seen me out there, if I've said, said something uh, to you, uh, at most it is please leave. This is, tr this is private property you're trespassing. Do you have any plans for security? Um, unfortunately, with the, with the two adjoining properties being 53 acres and the uh, changes in altitude um, and elevation, uh, it's really difficult to put up anything that would, ulti would physically deter people from being on the property. The best I do is call the East Peoria City Police. Okay. On a given, uh, I guess I'll go for a given week, how, what kind of traffic are you expecting in and out of the driveway onto Brennan Court? Um, so, so 98% of the time we do work on the weekends between the hours of 10 and 5. And uh, so for a given week, if I include the two days on a weekend, that would be, uh, there would be traffic in and out on a Saturday and maybe on a Sunday. How so many, well, how many number of vehicles would be passing on to Brennan Court in any given day or week? Um, and we talk about two trips or 20? Oh, no, 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 I mean, if it's two, it's a lot. A break for lunch, perhaps. I think the, the distance to the nearest home could be a concern just um, based on how noise travels. Sure. Um, my personal experience is the diesel lab down here was affecting me mm -hmm. where I live, and I was somebody that complained about not so much the decibel level, but the duration of it when okay. it yep. would last for, you know, a whole weekend or 12 hours at a time <laughs> or whatever. It just, you know. So I guess what are your plans for the building and to insulate any noise inside the building or coming from within the building? Yes, great question. It is the plan to insulate the entire building, uh, including the doors as best as is reasonably possible from a commercial door system uh, that's available today. In terms of the duration, if there was a question in there related to that, uh, you know, the, the activities inside the building would be um, very start and stop nature, uh, meaning it would be, you hear that 86 decibels, for example, from a, a sawmill for 15 to 20 seconds, and then you'd have a similar probably 30 to 45 seconds uh, where you didn't hear it, and then you would hear it again until the, the tree was effectively milled. I think that's all questions I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I got another question. Yeah, go ahead, Ed. Thank you. Um, are you gonna post it, no trespassing? It, yeah, it is, sir. It's posted already? It's. <laughs> Yes, it is at the drive. Mm -hmm. um, it's been posted over the years on as many trees as I could spray paint purple, okay. uh, as well as wrapping right. uh, no trespassing purple signs around trees uh, to try to use a uh, kind of a non-toxic method. Unfortunately, people that trespass that property rip all of that material down and leave it laying on the ground. Okay. And um, so you don't know how wide the easement is, whether you could wait. I, I, I do not, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I, I, but I can get that information. Oh, well, I think we need it. Cause it's, uh, okay. Yep. Important. Thank have, you. I've got a couple more questions, too. Uh, how many employees do you have will, will be back there at a given time? Uh, you're looking at them. Okay. Very good question. Easy answer. It's a hobby. It's, it's a hobby. Okay. And are, is there um, any plans for another access other than the Brennan Court access? Or is there any, even any possibility? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Don. Um, approximately 12 to 13 acres of this property. Um, if you could, Glenn, briefly. There you go. Nope, oh, stop right there. Um, so, so lower right-hand corner of the property, of the eastern property, uh, unfortunately, there's a white tag kind of over it, but there's about uh, a dozen or so acres that exist across the creek that currently are inaccessible. Okay. Um, I have made uh, a request to uh, Fond du Lac Township 
for uh, potential easement uh, across the area currently slated to have a solar farm um, towards the back off of what would be a, the Robin side. And I think it's, is it Dundee Court, I believe? Um, and, and I do not remember the cross street, I apologize. Uh, but, but it would be, it basically today goes off into a field where the solar farm is planned. Um, and I've made a request to see if I could get a very, an easement, excuse me, uh, from that, across that property in order to access that dozen acres. Okay. Other than that, there are no other plans. Uh, they're okay. almost, made, I mean, the, the terrain is effectively make, making it a, impossible. Yeah, I understand. That's all I got. All right, Derek, I think we're done finally. Okay. <laughs> Have a seat. Excellent. Thank you. Is there uh, anyone that would like to either speak for or against the petitioner? Uh, yes, step right up. Did you, Good evening. Uh, did you identify yourself and your home address? Okay, my name is Allison Smith. I live at 104 Brennan Court, okay, aka the, the property right with the easement on it. Please <laughs> raise your right hand so I'm going to tell the truth or hold yourself. You got it. I do. Okay, go ahead now. Uh, so I am the one with the easement on my property uh, that the Grievens would like to access. Uh, over the past two weeks since the public hearing notice appeared, uh, I've been doing a lot of research and I've learned a lot. However, I still have four questions that have been. Um, Four questions and concerns I'd like to be addressed before the vote tonight. Uh, I'd like to address the legal access, destruction of property, my property value, and the end of the project. In my research and prior knowledge of our property, I cannot find documentation that allows the grievance legal access to the property to use the easement. According to the plan of the neighborhood, the use of the easement is limited to ingress, egress for the purpose of maintaining the Highland Hills sewage treatment plant. So I don't know if there is access or if you guys know that they have legal access or not, but I cannot currently find it. Secondly, in the past when vehicles use the easement, there tends to be a lot of damage to our property. I'm not saying that is the grievings, it could be the city, um, but as you guys have mentioned and said, the road is not very wide and we're trying to fit electrical trucks down there and other things down there. Mostly they're way too large to fit on the easement, but there's also been vehicles that have parked in our yard in the past, which is an issue for us. So I would really like our property just to be left alone in this proposal. I'm also un unsure about what all tree farming or timber harvests entail. However, I'm familiar with how buildings like the ones Mr. and Mrs. Grieving have suggested to be built on their property and how those are delivered. I'm also fairly certain a semi truck going down the easement will not fit. So that means they would be driving on our lawn. The Greens PowerPoint also mentions tandem jump trucks and the future delivery of a kiln. I ask the committee tonight to veto the use of any trucks that do not fit on the easement road. My husband and I are also concerned about our property value. What does this look like with multiple vehicles coming and going? In the Greens PowerPoint, it mentions levels of noise from the invasive species management and the bandsaw milling. However, it fails to mention the level of noise for timber harvest, which I think he did clarify with the um, different vehicles and the chainsaws, but I didn't know that was what entailed with the timber harvest phrase. And lastly, I'm curious to know what is stopping the grievings in the future if this is all allowed. As per the grievings PowerPoint, they mentioned that this will continue as invasion species management for two or three years. And at the end of this time, what is stopping Mr. and Mrs. Grieving from picking this back up in five years or when they tar harvest timber every 10 to 15 years, who is regulating how often this actually does occur? Do they have a free-for-all once the property is approved tonight here and out? And that's all my concerns I'd like to bring up tonight. Okay, uh, you're directly next to the, uh, to the easement, is that right? My property is on below the easement. You guys put the road on top of it. Okay, and then do you know how wide that easement is? It's not wide enough for an electrical truck. For what kind of a truck? And, uh, you guys hired electrical people two summers ago. They're kind of semi-width. It's they barely fit. Oh, that's interesting. Huh? Do, we, do we know how the sewer treatment plant is down? Huh? Uh, where the sewer treatment plant? Mm -hmm. They said well, they, they were hired by the city, so they but have, they would have had to have big enough mm -hmm. for a truck, right? You need to get to a treatment plant. You need to get the easy. 
copy these. Um, he said he's been doing this since 2014. Have you noticed any problems with a lot of it? We have not had issues, but uh, I work inside a lot or not home a lot, so. Yeah, he, he's talking about a one-time harvest. It's a lifetime deal, you understand. Once you harvest a tree, it's gonna take 30 to 50 years to grow it back. But it hasn't been harvested a ton yet, and that property is very yeah. overgrown. So, I mean, it's, he's saying it's just a hobby, and, and, and there's not enough land there to make a, a living out of harvesting those trees. So, but it takes 27 yeah, trees to make 27 grand. Does uh, anybody have any questions for him? I don't. All right, well, thank you. Oh, I forgot to ask the window. Mm -hmm. No. Did you have any questions? No, I do not. Thank you. Anybody else for or against? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next case. Okay. Oh, we got one more? Okay, I'm sorry. Hello, uh, Ryan Beck, about, uh, 102 Continental Drive. You're on Continental? Continental, yep. Yeah. Okay, raise your right hand. It's all you started to tell the truth, I hope you saw that. Thank you. Go ahead. My question uh, would only be, I, and I, I uh, emailed a little bit back and forth with the grievings uh, about this. The noise issue right now is, is really not an issue, at least from where I'm at, and I'm probably a little closer to the property than, than some in the neighborhood. My question, though, would be if this property were sold in five years, and this special use is in place, and someone did want to harvest all of these trees that were down there and haul those in and out of this road, what's to keep them from doing that? Does the, does the special use end when the property is sold, or does that stay in place? And uh, I, like I said, the, the noise hasn't been a, a problem, uh, and I like the, the 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. kind of guideline. But is there going to be something written into that special use that holds those times in place so that, again, if it, I, he seems like they seem like very nice people, honest people, I take them at their word. But if the property is sold and someone decides they want to, to use this as a commercial property and they want to start at 7 a.m. on Saturday mornings cutting, harvesting trees, what keeps that from happening? Uh, number one, if, if a commercial harvester came in, he'd wipe it out in a, in a week and he'd be gone forever and the trees would be gone forever. So it, it wouldn't be a constant problem, but it could be a problem. Yeah. Uh, so, so all of that could happen. Yes. Um, could you explain to him how the uh, special use works? So at the special use, we would have conditions specific to the operation. And as the, the code language has been prepared, and then any condition that the zoning board would uh, approve, it's gonna be designed to limit the operation to just what's being proposed here. So if somebody else came in and, and said, hey, this has been continuously operating, that special use does stay with the property, but they have to follow that same process, they'd have to have that same plan in place, and so there would be those, those same requirements, and to intensify that use any would require a revisit back to the zoning board and a public hearing on it, and, and certainly, I would expect we'd probably hear from some neighbors if that changed sure. uh, with the and, change in ownership. And I will say from, from my discussions uh, with Mr. Grieving, it sounds like the activity itself is not going to change uh, as from what's been going on in, in the past few years. And that hasn't been an issue, and most people didn't know that it was even happening. So I, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, and it is also my understanding that the addition of the building back there is going to cause less traffic going in and out because now all of the equipment can stay on site. And that's really what drove all this, was so, the, the building requirements. So at, at everything at face value, I, I, don't, I don't oppose this. I was just concerned about how long that would go on and, and Ty answered that well, so thank you. All right, thanks. Sure, step right up. Identify yourself, please, and your home address. Yep, my name is Terry Lamprecht, and my address is 111 Patriot Drive. Patriot Drive? Patriot Drive. Oh, great. So I'm Raise the- Raise your right hand. So yep. I'm just swear to tell you the whole truth. I do. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my house is the second closest house to the location where Mr. Greving is planning to put up a building. And I just want to 
um, bring up the fact that I have heard the constant beeping of the Bobcat over the course of the last number of months already. So this is a concern of mine that the noise level will continue to increase. The Bobcat runs at what hours are you talking about? I, all hours of the day right now. Not on the weekends? I was just on the weekends or all, all week? Or? I, I haven't kept track of the days that it's been running, but it's been a constant beeping behind my house for quite a number of weeks, months at this point. All right. That's it? That's it. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. You want to come back? I, I just have some additional information based on the uh, question about how wide is the easement. Um, I did find that information. I have a copy of it, uh, if I can. Yes, uh, go ahead. Yes, so uh, just to, to maybe answer two questions. Um, uh, the easement was granted in 2007 for this property, uh, and I have the legal document here, a copy of the legal document here. Um, it allows for an easement that is uh, up to 50 feet wide. Uh, currently, it is not that wide, very obviously. Um, but certainly, uh, I think it was Gina that asked the question, hey, you know, do I have any plans to make it wider? Uh, I, I don't, but absolutely, if needed, I am not opposed to that. So the easement's 50 foot wide. Hey, how, how wide is the lot at that entrance? Uh, is that the full width? Or? I, you, do you have? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That's fine. Go ahead. I, I do not know. Do you know off the top of my head? It's, it's actually at its widest at the, uh, at, at the cul-de-sac. All right. It gets narrower from there. You, know, you might want to give a copy of the easement to Ty. Okay, I can do that. I got a question. Uh, one more question. Can I question. email that to you, Ty? Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Um, does it tell you or does it show you who engineered that? Uh, it was prepared by, that's probably an attorney, I assume, Brian. Well, it would be. Megin, Meginus? Meginus? It should have been laid out. Is, Elias, there, is, is there a plat showing this? Um, you know, you know I was like, looking to see if there be, was uh, one attached. And, and there, yes, actually sure there is, but I could not read it. My laptop. I about blamed my wife for not bringing my glasses and that. Uh, and there is one, yes. In it my will. opinion, to have the engineer that drew that up stake it out, stake, put yep. stakes oh, there. No. Yep, I'm hearing you. Yes, metal sir. stakes. Yep. So they know exactly what the easement is. And well, and the, to be, I mean, when you see this, the easement actually doesn't begin until we get to the back of the property line. So what you're seeing at the uh, curb or at the cul de sac is actually not part of the. And you need one. And he needs to go further. He needs to go up where the where the cars go in or the trucks go in or whatever. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. needs to be done. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. So I got a question yeah, again. Okay. Another question. So, so the you're saying the easement does not go to the to the street then right now? Well, this particular uh, uh, visual. It may. Do, does okay. not have it included. It doesn't look like it's got kind of some hash marks across it. It's not completed. So yeah, I, I was going to say, or I, I was don't. there or before, and they just went from there on. It existed from so that you don't point. Know until you get Correct. The engineer out there to yeah. lay it all the way out. Yeah. Yep. Are you satisfied? Yeah. Oh, all right. Thank I am. You. Thank you. Yep. Can I make a uh, quick point? Go ahead. Um, one of the individuals that uh, had some questions about the noise here this evening, um, please check the records. Uh, there will be several trespassing uh, uh, issues that are documented with these Peoria police uh, for that individual. It's just relevant to, I think, ultimately the integrity of the person that was here before you. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Yes, come on up. Mr. Grubbing? Yes, sir. So I know we've, we've run into each other on a couple of occasions. Absolutely. And I want to just I, I tried to apologize to you once, and I also know that the most that you said you've done it. Yeah, would you uh, identify I, yourself, please, in your home address? Yeah, Terry Lampract, 111 Patriot Drive. Raise your right hand. I only swear to tell the truth, I'll hold you yourself again. Yep. Okay, now go ahead. So I've run into Mr. Greving a couple times in the woods. I've been riding my four wheeler there for 20 years. Um, so the first time I ran into Mr. Greving, he didn't 
tell me that he owned the property. He just told me that someone was putting up a fence. That was the first time. The second time, the police showed up at my house um, after he screamed at me with profanities while I was riding around with my daughter. Um, so after the cops came to my house and talked to me, I have not gone back down in the woods since. So the first time I, I was told by the property owner to stay off the property, I've done so. Oh, you did. I absolutely did. Well, you did. How did you say you did when you got the, when the cops came on the second time? I, I only talked to the cops one time. Okay, hold no, on. That's no, okay. No, no, your wife told me. Go ahead. Are you done? That's it, unless there's any questions about that. I have none. No. Thank you. Are we done? Anybody else? Okay. Let's move on to. Uh, uh, this will be case uh, 20 SU 24. Petition to Sam Mock on behalf of uh, Crew Noodle House for a special use for the outside placement and operation of a food trailer on property located at 206 West Camp Street. That's uh, 10 1 1 3 3 100 0 3 0. Is Sam here or somebody to speak for him? Glenn's going to check outside, but we don't see him. Mm -hmm. So Glenn is going to check, but we don't see him. So I'd say we can move on to the next case if we'd like. Just move on to the next one. Nobody here. Can I table it? Yeah. Well, let's see. We're just going to run out of the He's not here. He's not here. We should move on. Yeah, we should. Let's go on. Uh, the petitioner is not here, so uh, we're just going to move on to the next case. <coughs> uh, this is case 20, V25, uh, petition of Rodney Slusher of C&G Concrete on behalf of Richard and Judy Capes for a setback variance of two foot to allow for the placement of a paved area on property located at 100 Longview Court. That's 10 1 1 27 409 008. Uh, are the slushers here? Or? Rodney? Identify yourself and home address. Rodney Slusher, 426 Newman Drive, East Peoria, Illinois. Okay, raise your right hand so I'm sorry to tell you what you're so you got. I do. Go ahead and tell us what's going on up there. Uh, uh, Richard and Judy Cap, I'm the owner of CNG Concrete Construction Company okay. here in East Peoria. I've been in business here uh, as a family business 54 years. Very familiar with it. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so uh, Rick and Judy contacted me to have a new driveway. I don't know if you know where they live. I don't know if we have a picture of it. Yeah, we've all been by it, I think. Okay. okay. And so uh, Rick is a handicapped fella and is unable to get uh, in and out of his house uh, with the stairs that are there but he is now because we installed him a new driveway mm -hmm. and a sidewalk that runs along all the way up to the property line and runs along the fence and uh, he's able to um, get his uh, lawn service guys be able to get their lawnmower easily to his front uh, lawn. Now we did pour the the sidewalk uh, right up to the property line. Unbeknownst to me, there was a, there is a two foot uh, setback uh, in East Peoria. Well, <laughs> you know, we've been in business 54 years and you think we should know that, but we don't know it uh, because I've never had to get a permit. I've never got a permit for a driveway in the city of East Peoria and probably the uh, uh, a lot of the reason that is um, is because most of the work that we've done has been for the city of East Peoria and of course the city of East Peoria is not going to uh, charge themselves I guess for a permit and back in the day you know uh, everybody kind of knew everybody in the city of East Peoria and uh, my dad Kurt Slusher that started CNG Concrete um, did a lot of things around the city and so we just exchanged uh, help or 
We exchanged, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We helped one another, you know? Uh, so, so I'm just asking for a, for a variance. Okay, has the, uh, the driveway affected the water flow from the hillside? It's up on a hillside, right? Say that again, I'm sorry. The property is, is, right, is located on a very steep slope. Has the uh, driveway affected the water flow at all? Or? No, the, we made the water flow out to, um, it's not Longview, Brookview, all the way from that fence. It drains down the driveway. There is some water that would stay on his property that along the sidewalk uh, that uh, would go alongside of his house. Okay. But it, the driveway's been in since we've had some of these torrential downpours, and I've been over there, and uh, there's not affected it one bit. Yeah, to, to get a variance, we need some kind of uh, hardship. So uh, let's work on the, uh, you say the owner is, is handicapped? Or? Yeah, the owner is very handicapped, and so is his wife of 80 years old. And uh, he's, they have, I'm sure we got some pictures, I think. Yeah, uh, that's not necessary. What, Just, what we had. Yeah, I'll take your word what, for it that he. What we have <laughs> now. Okay. All right. Uh, you want to start with Brenda? No, Belinda, I'm sorry. Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any questions. I've looked it over and I don't have any questions at all. Okay, let's go to the other end. Uh, Gina, let's see if I can pronounce your name. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's a rather extensive project that not only involved the driveway, the sidewalk, but the like buildup of the front yard. Was that all done about the same time? Buildup of the front yard. Uh, the pilings that were installed. We've got two pictures of the property before and after the front yard work was done. Did you do okay. the yard no. work? No. Uh, all the, the rocks that are there now, those uh, stones, they were there. We didn't, he'd done that years ago. Well, we've got two pictures in our packet, and one of them is pre-front wall, and the front yard looks like it slopes at a much um, easier to mow terrain and and less steep, I guess, than the picture where the rocks and the current uh, design, where the pilings or the big rectangle rocks are stacked up the front so you're saying you didn't do that work no that was already done the only thing we did is what you see is the driveway work and that was there really was very minimal excavation we we had to bring in some uh, granular base to build it up um, so the drive so we could get the water to drain back towards Brookview and it, so it wasn't the driveway wasn't so steep they, they're literally, uh, he had not been out of, in, at the end of July, he had been out of the house two times by, um, the only way to get out is help. But not, not now. Now he can take his walker because it, they can literally pull their vehicle uh, within probably 10 feet of their back door. And uh, you know, they're, they're both elderly people uh, and handicapped. It's made, it's, it made a vast improvement, and safety, the safety issue. If that house would have caught on fire, there's no way they got out. I, I, don't think I, I don't think my concern is as much with the um, unpermitted driveway, but the sidewalk that, that's been installed does go right up to the property line. It makes the driveway or the sidewalk sit I don't know, 18 plus inches above the neighbor's backyard. Um, to me, I have a similar situation at my house, except the next door neighbor's driveway is asphalt. And so I just get run off into my garage, my potting shed, and then my backyard is sinking into the woods. Um, so I feel for the neighbor. I actually went and talked to the neighbor um, yesterday. And even before that had made a couple of trips out there to just to kind of um, identify what the problem is. The fact that the sidewalk was installed so that a lawn care service can get a lawnmower to the front yard, I could buy, except the gate going from the sidewalk to the front yard is fairly narrow, so I don't think you could get a riding lawnmower through it. And there's still a step down from the sidewalk to the front yard. So lawn care service people are going to have to figure out how to get a push mower 
across there anyway. So if the sidewalk was cement or gravel or whatever, I think they, it would make it no difference to the lawn care people, just saying. Um, the homeowner next door is very concerned and um, had water in his base or in his um, garage basement and was um, had pumped it out the night before from the rain. So there has been some problems. The, the problems are not from that that new driveway being put in. That driveway is 12 inches. That, that you see is it has to be a little bit of a retaining wall there uh, and it's 12 inches and to, to match, you, had to, you have to match elevations and you have to get some way to get the water away out to bro, uh, uh, grip you. And so we had to raise that elevation up. And no, they're not going to take a riding lawnmower to cut, uh, uh, you know, maybe four or five hundred square feet in the front yard. Right, but there is a drop from the side. There, yeah, there's a little the bit. Of, yeah, the front yeah, and that's because you don't want to make um, the um, the sidewalk at least has to be uh, less than five five percent or less of running slope. You don't want to. Um, you can't have. Uh, you know, you can't have a, a, a very uh, steep slope. That's just. ADA uh, rules, but there, there's uh, we've had extensive uh, rainfall, and uh, of course, the back of the Newell's uh, uh, yard is probably 15 feet uh, above the uh, top of their basement wall. So there's a substantial amount in their own yard that's going to come right down into their basement if they're getting water. I understand. That's most of these pure, it seems like. That's all the questions I have. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, Ed. I have no more questions or no questions. Thank you. Don, you got anything? Yeah, I do. Um, the the project, the add in the uh, the driveway and everything, a great idea to help them, absolutely. Um, my concern, uh, just like Gina, is that two foot um, is for the the lawn care correct to get in and out around the around the side of the house is that yeah that helps them get the, okay yeah get the instead of carrying the, the lawnmower up the yeah. steps that's how um, they had to get to it that's but the residents uh they don't use they don't they wouldn't use that the the the, the need they, they had was a was a driveway and a parking area there and that is taken care of and that is definitely within the yeah, the okay. residents, uh, she will be able to, and he, he could, now he, he mm -hmm. would be able to with his walker. Will he? He probably will not. Right. And, and so the, what, I, what I'm getting at, I guess, is there's really no, <clears throat> there's no need for the residents to, they're not using that two-foot space. The, the safety and getting in and out of the house and that kind of thing is taken care of if that two-foot is there or not. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it's, okay. it was just convenience, you know, absolutely, to, absolutely. to get that port over there. And uh, so there again, so they could take a lawnmower to the front yard, and they could have access. They've got two dogs, and they can they can use that. She she is capable, you know, sure. and she okay. can take her two dogs in the front yard. Uh, there is the neighbor does have a uh, a wall there that if they you walk over there. And you look at that wall, there's no fence, and it's probably a 16-foot drop. Yeah, that's all I got. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Would anybody like to either speak for or against the petitioner? Seeing none, we will move on to the next case. which is 20 V26 petition of Joseph and Rebecca Malanchek. I hope that didn't butcher it too much for a setback variance to allow for the placement of a privacy fence in the front yard on property located at 122 South Euclid. That's pin 0505112040010. Is either Joseph or Rebecca here? Or? Uh, yeah, I need your name and your home address. 
Rebecca Malachak. I live at 122 South Euclid Avenue. You raise your right arm. Do you follow me so to tell the truth, the whole truth, so I hope you got it. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Um, my husband and I are asking for a variance to continue our privacy fence um, up the side of our yard, basically up to the front corner of our lot. Um, the reason we are asking for this is because I had to get an order of protection against my neighbor. She stands in her front yard and harasses me and threatens me. So we are trying to just enjoy our property and be able to be in our yard and feel safe. And um, we also just, her front yard kind of looks like a, a trash dump and we would like to maybe not have to look at that anymore. We would like to see a nice looking fence instead of six trash cans and broken down cars with broken windows and tarps over them. So that's why we're asking for it. Okay, uh, I, I was up there. Your, your house is probably, what, 150 feet away from there? It's quite a ways, 200? Yes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so there is quite a different a distance there. Nor normally, uh, uh, privacy fences don't, uh, don't extend out to the front of the property. It's, it's a bad, uh, uh, I don't know of any, any, any town around that allows front yard privacy fences mm -hmm. and uh, I don't I don't know if that's going to be a real hardship for you but uh, I'd be very much against uh, running a, a privacy fence all the way out to the front of the property uh, Gina would you like to start Sure. so Rebecca is the current fence as long as um, it can be under current ordinances the pre-existing fence? The, the Right, the privacy fence that's built of the wooden one that looks like it's fairly new. Yeah, we just It is as that. long as we permit it to be? But, no, it's not. So you could go a few more feet or whatever else and still stay within the zone ordinances? I believe so. And would that give you any, um, any more privacy from her? It would provide a small amount, but where she typically stands and watches and harasses us is past that point and it's very uncomfortable <laughs> well i think a part of my concern is a, a, a solid fence like that to continue that to the end of the property or to be so close to the end of the property i think um, could block the view of traffic from some of the driveways around there and um, so that's a little bit worrisome um, if she stands so close to the street that extending the fence out a few more feet or whatever the zone ordinance allows, it doesn't sound like that's going to help. Um, maybe nothing will. Um, but I think we can't, I don't feel comfortable setting a precedent and allowing you to do that knowing that we would then have possibly a flood of other people wanting to do the same just because they didn't want to look at their neighbor's property, which we've all had experiences with for sure. Mm -hmm. I guess I really didn't have a whole lot of questions. That's it. Thank you. Okay, yeah. How about you? Um, can they turn the fence so it's in the front but not way out there? Uh, Ty, can you give us some? Uh, I'm thinking if they if they could so could turn, turn the, the fence. The fence could be brought out to the front plane in their house, and then it could be brought all the way turn return back to, to the front of their. Across so the front of their house, so they can't. Feet, I think, it's quite a bit of distance from the corner of the house or the lot line. But it could be brought all the way back. That's what I meant. So yes. they couldn't, so they couldn't see into their house, or at least into the front of their house, if they, if they went to the front of the house. Correct. The fence could be. Then go all the way to the dry or the street, because that's the real danger. Because people could, a kid could run out in the street, and they wouldn't see him until they're out in the street. They get killed. So it's not. That's why we have the ordinance, and mostly it's because, or people can back out of your driveway, or whatever, and and they wouldn't see them until like you wouldn't even see cars coming until you got right out um, of the, on the street. So I, that is really dangerous. Yeah. So where the pre-existing fence is now, yes, there is a, a ditch and quite a big space where between the 
fence and where the road is. Um, Would that provide enough safety could, for her could, backing out? Um, you'd have to, I think you'd have to have most of the front available. You could turn it, and if there's a ditch there, I guess you could climb the ditch. I mean, she you know, can't crawl underneath the ditch, you see. She's talking about the ditch all the way out to the, uh, uh, the street. Mm -hmm. Out to the street? Yeah. Well, you could put the fence over the ditch. Anyway, I don't know. I, we'd have to. Even if we could just extend it up halfway through the front yard, anything would help if. I don't know. Are you done? I'm going to be done, yeah. <laughs> oh, she was talking about the putting the ditches out in front of the house. Taking it all the way to the street to the ditch. Yeah, we're not going to. Yeah, we can't. We can't take the fence all the way to the street. No way. Are you okay now? I'm all right. If she, unless, I was just trying to give them an alternative. Trying to get yeah, some sort of alternative. I got some questions. Uh, Ty, first of all, what is the what is the rule? The fence can go to the front of the. So the the privacy fence can be placed if it's not a corner lot, which this is not. Uh, can come up to the front plane of the house. Okay, and is that so, the front plane of the house, or would that be like the setback requirement? No, it's the front plane of the it house. And, and in this case, it's uh, you have kind of an unusual neighborhood. You have a lot of. Uh, variances. I mean, it's certainly there's some line that you can draw with a few of the houses, but you have kind of staggered, you know, m many neighborhoods you have every, every house is back 30 feet. Right. This one's a little yeah, different. Yeah. That's what you have to do. And, and so do you, do you know how many more feet of fence you can add? Glenn, do you remember? I think you measured for me. Line. If they took it to the front plane of, sorry, so if they took it to where they're currently allowed by code, which is the front plane, yeah. they would need an additional, and again, they'd have to stop on their property line. It would be another well, more than four point whatever it be here. I want to say it's around 20 something, not 64 feet, I'm sorry. Well, that's that's from the front plane to the property line. To the property line, correct. Can you get a dimension from that yellow line from that front plane to the existing fence? Uh, the existing fence, I think, does run all the way to the property line. The you're talking about the the chain link one, correct? I'm talking about the privacy, privacy fence, fence that they have up. How oh, far could they extend that still? I'm trying. I'm trying to. Where does it ends right about here, right, guys? Mm -hmm. so where does <laughs> Roughly the depth of the house. Yeah. Depth of the house, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, which so 25, 30 feet. Yeah, let's. Okay, okay. So then, so then you could add that much without any, any concerns and issue, right? Okay. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Am I, am I correct? Yes, that's at? correct. Okay. How many more feet? So she could add rough, I mean, if you allowed it to go all the way to the property line, it would be roughly 60 feet. No, no, no. To the, the front of the depth house. of the house. Oh, the 30. depth of the house is yeah. that was 30. 37. 37 feet, 30 roughly. 37. So that would cover basically the rest of the side of her detached garage and maybe part of her actual residence. Yeah, the back of, the, the back of her house is about the front of their house. Okay, and I guess, um, okay, so you could add approximately 37 feet already. Okay, I think I'm done with my questions. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, Belinda, would you like to make any comments? I would not. I think everybody's already addressed everything that I was going to say. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Mind you're still with us. Okay, I guess we're done with you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody here that wants to either speak for or against? It looks like we got the couple. Wait a minute. Somebody wait. Just, just a second. We got one coming from the back. They're coming from back there. Hold on a second. We'll, we'll get to you in just a second here. Good evening. Uh, please Good evening. Uh, give us your name and your home address. Jim Reitz, 
121 South or 119 South Euclid Avenue, East Peoria. Okay, so you're pretty close to him. Raise yep. your right hand. Following so I tell you the whole truth, so if you got it. I do. Go ahead. Uh, you're setting that setback at the front of their house. Why don't you set it at the front of the neighbor's house? You're only coming another 20 feet, but at least you're blocking the view from that house. That's where the problem's coming. This lady that they're talking about is unique. She is a real piece of work. I've dealt with her for years. I'd like to see that fence. I also own the property at 121. The more that fence comes out, the more it blocks her junk, which the city doesn't seem to manage to get to to get her to clean it up. Uh, it is cleaned up right now. But boy, let me tell you, go back there about uh, June or July next year, the city doesn't put her on a repeat offenders list, and you'll come out and say, okay, you mowed the yard. We don't care about this big mulch pile. We don't care about this down tree because we can't see that. You know, if the inspections department would come out and actually do their job and look at the whole thing, it would sure help. Now, this is a little different than what they're trying to do, but if the front of their house is at the back of hers, at least come back. I think Ty said that uh, the setback normally is 30 feet. Typically it's 30 in a single family neighborhood. You know, why not let it come out to that 30 feet? That gives you plenty of room to look out for what's coming with kids and parking and backing out. They don't look when they back out anyway. They backed into cars across the street and left, hit and run. And that's true. You can look in the police reports. So don't aim to give you guys a hard time, but anything you can give them to bring it on forward, I'd love to see the 30 foot. Get it out as far as you can. If I go to sell my house at 121, that fence will look a lot better than her junk sitting there. All right, thank you. Okay, your name and address, home address, please. Steve Harrison, uh, Allen, the property at 123 South Euclid. Okay, you're right there, raise your right hand, so I'm sorry to tell the truth, I'll let you yourself you got it. My problem is, is you're trying to change an ordinance because uh, two neighbors don't agree. And uh, I think this is a bad reason to do that. You're gonna set a precedent if you do this. And everybody, uh, including my daughter who lives in East Peoria, doesn't feel like this is a very good reason to put a fence up because, because you don't like the neighbor, or you don't like her yard or whatever's going on. You know, I understand what they're talking about, but you're talking about changing an ordinance for a reason. Well, they're making an exception to the ordinance, but you're right, okay. Yeah, the, 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 strictly for the reason that they don't want to look at their neighbor. Well, you know, in some neighborhoods, everybody don't want to look at their neighbor. So, you know, you'd have, uh, like in some states, you'd have concrete walls you know, every house would be in a, in a concrete jungle. You're great. And that's all I have to say about it. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. One more? Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, name and home address, please. Stephanie Boyle, 105 Medina Court. Medina Court. You're not on the same street? Raise your right no. hand. No. Oh, you sort of tell you, though. I'll hold you to help you guys. I do. Go ahead. Um, I'm not really here to speak against anybody. I feel very sorry for what they're going through and do understand because on my street I, we have a neighbor that nobody wants to look at ever uh, my concern is just for safety because i have a daughter that you know on our street if this becomes a precedence where we allow exceptions i don't want this to spread into other neighborhoods because i feel like if something goes completely to the street that's a safety issue um, that's also could lower the value of our property so I don't mind if there is a privacy fence there. I don't want to see two neighbors feuding. I understand that. I just don't want to see a privacy fence going all the way up to the street where it becomes a safety hazard. Okay, I tend to agree with you. Thank you. My name is Joseph Malachek. I live at 122 South Euclid Avenue. Okay. 
Okay, you're the husband? Yes. Okay, raise your right hand. Tell them, sir, tell the truth, the whole truth, so I hope get. I do. Answer some of the questions. It will not be going to the street. It's set back 11 feet already where our existing fence runs across our property line. Um, and also, it's not just we don't want to look at her. She has threatened my wife multiple times. I can't leave my wife at home. She can't go out in the front yard to water plants. You she made can't. Reports of this, or have you reported this? Yes, we have an order of protection against her. Oh, okay. Um, my wife can't even go in the backyard because she'll look out of her kitchen window and watch her in the backyard doing stuff. Um, we can't be in the front yard and do anything. That's been numerous times where she has threatened my wife. So it's not against about not wanting to see her stuff, which there's multiple things in the front yard that no one's done anything about. We've complained about it, multiple neighbors have. It's the safety issue of my wife being at home. I can't have her at home. I can't travel out of town for work, so it's costing me money there. And I, it's not the not looking at her. I want my wife to feel safe in our house. Possible to put some shrubs up or something? Of course, that would take a while to grow. It costs a lot more to put up than a six foot privacy fence. And is there any kind of a screen you could put up between the properties? <coughs> as far as tree wise, it'll take us 15 there, years to grow up high enough to have any effect. There's some type of wall near your house, would that work? Then we would be closing in our driveway to do anything. It's, we want to run it along the fence line off set off the pre-existing i will maintain it behind there it, even if it's 10 or an extra 10 feet back from our pre-existing fence line is to keep my wife safe in her own driveway all right Thank thanks you. Hi. Uh, name, name and home address? Martin Lacefield, 124 South Euclid. Mm -hmm. I'm next door. Yes. Tell the truth, I'll let yourself again. Yes, I do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I have witnessed a lot of stuff with this lady, the, their neighbor. I've been there for now 16 years. The fence <laughs> actually will be a blessing, mostly for the neighborhood, from anybody from their house south. <laughs> Be hundred percent truthful with you. Um, we don't like hear, we don't like seeing it. Also, um, they've had problems with uh, the neighbors' dogs running into their yard. We have problems with their dogs running into the, all the neighbors' yards. Um, one of our neighbors just was helping last week while three of her dogs were running the neighborhood. Um, if we sit there and have it where our property our property value can go up by not looking at, uh, as the neighborhood sees it, a junk house, um, it would actually really help all of us. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Okay, hey, name and home address? Ken Roll, 125 South Euclid, East Fury. Raise your right arm. It's on the story to tell the truth, don't let yourself be God. Yes, you do. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, the gentleman here, what he was talking about, he lives at, or he owns a house at 123, I believe he said, which was next door to me. I bought my house two and a half years ago. The house that he owns has been set there empty since I bought my house. No movement over there other than somebody mowing the grass. So I'm not sure his concern about the privacy fence because nobody lives in that house. Nobody's lived in that house. I heard the house was gutted. Second of all, I think the city, if the city would do what they should do, the, the city's been called numerous times on this lady over the trash around the house, the broken down cars, uh, the dog pound's been called on her dogs. They don't take the dogs. They don't make them do anything. I mean, I'm not sure why the city's not doing their job to control this. I'm all for this fence being put out all the way to the street. First of all, it blocks my view of their house. If I had it my way, I'd have them put a fence all the way around her house so we couldn't see her house. But, I mean, I just think that everybody's opposed, or some people are opposed to this privacy fence. If you call the city on her, which is probably what started this, if you call the city on the dogs, 
The dog pound tells her who calls. She goes down and harasses them. She's been to my house and harass. I called on her trailer being parked in the street all, uh, for many days. She came down and harassed me. Well, that tells me that somebody's telling them who's calling. So I think the city has a lot to do with this whole problem too. So that's just my two cents worth. All right, thank you. And I, I'll agree with that also. Okay. She came down to our house last time that uh, there was a problem and confronted my wife at her, at her front door. Do you have something to say? Yeah. Stephanie Boyle, 105 Medina Court. Tell the no, truth. You don't have to. You already did. Okay. Um, first of all, yes, it is true that our property at 123 Euclid that belongs to my family is empty, but the property is maintained and has been maintained the entire time. Uh, the other thing is, I don't think any of us have an issue with a privacy fence per se. It's a safety issue. What we heard it was going right up to the road, which would be a safety issue. So that's the concern that we have. The other thing would be for me, even though I don't live on that street, if we allow you know, a property fence to go up to the street, if somebody else heard about that, then other people would be wanting to do that. If it's not going to be that, I wouldn't have an issue with it. All right, thank you. Okay, nobody else? We're going to uh, move to case 20, R27. Uh, petition of Jeff Gablehausen of 4G EP LLC for the rezoning of properties from business B3 business service district to R4 multifamily zoning. Uh, district located at 2480 Washington Road, that's PIN 0202 19 Jeff, raise your right hand. Name and, name and home address? Jeff Gablehausen, 1105 Fond du Lac Drive. And you tell them to tell the truth on what you sell again. I do. And tell us what you're doing. Okay, so this property, if you're up in the uh, Sunnyland area, right on the edge of uh, Sunnyland, coming back toward East Peoria, Used to say Q works up on it uh, for quite some time. Uh, it's currently zoned B3. Uh, what we're looking to do, and I have my two sons with me here in the, uh, the audience. They're the majority owners of 4G uh, EPLLC. 4G means four gable housing. So my brother and I are the minority owners. Okay. And, uh, and the two sons, it's their first venture into a, a business deal. So the, uh, the purpose um, is to seek a down zoning. So a less intense use. Uh, currently, as a B3 zoning, we have about as much flexibility as you could imagine, as you well know, under the zoning code. Uh, there are versions of residential we can do in the property already, and we could do a motel on the property. We don't want to do those things. We, we think that there is a, a, a housing crisis in a lot of ways, and we think this is a good opportunity to do a small, contained, uh, multifamily project. Um, there'll be uh, small units. Uh, there, none of them are designed for more than two people. Most of them are actually sized for one person. Uh, th so they're efficiency size units. Um, initially, the existing building is all that will be dealt with. We're not looking to build out into the parking lot. We have a more than abundant parking for this or any other use on that property. So really, um, you know, by doing this, we're able to get this property back into uh, uh, business, so to speak, because it has been vacant for some time. And at the same time, we're able to meet what we think is a growing housing need. Sounds good. This is the old tavern, I assume. Right. It's been a tavern. Um, well, the, the gentleman that lives a couple doors down says his, his father helped to build it. And, you know, it's probably been a tavern for 60 or 70 years. Yeah, it's been quite an eyesore, so I, yeah. it needs something done with it. Well, we, um, you know, we, we think that it can be dressed up and made to look a lot nicer with some awnings. Um, all of the entrances... Um, we'll, we'll enter out into the parking lot, and we think we can dress it up nicely. All right, thank you. Ed, you want to start this one? No, I'm good for it. Good for it? How about Don? Go ahead and do it. I've seen that place for some of No, I'm good. Melinda, any questions? Oh, there she is. <laughs> um, none at this time. Okay, one more. 
Gina, I didn't forget you this time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jeff, go back for me, and how many total units will there be? We, we really don't know at this point, um, going for a rezoning. Initially, with the building, the footprint that it is, we're starting with five units. Okay. I, I guess I was a little taken back by why there wasn't a proposed project description in here, and there was just a line drawn through it. I thought, I guess my question to Ty or Glenn was, are we just simply approving the zoning change, and then at a later point, would Mr. Gablehausen be coming back with some sort of a plan? or it sounds like the description was just left off of the... So the answer to the first question is yes. We're just, we're just uh, reviewing the zoning and providing a recommendation. The other part of it is, is that the board is looking at the entirety of what could go into the zoning classification. Now, multifamily is fairly one-dimensional. It's going to be some sort of multifamily development, but um, we're not looking at a specific project that the specific project will have to fit within the code requirements as far as density and, and building codes and that sort of thing. So it's really just what goes into that, that zoning mix. Not quite as variety varied as Jeff pointed out with B3, which has a whole host of different uses that could go into it. Gotcha. Okay, no more questions. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you, Joe. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anybody here to speak for or against the petition or? Hearing now, we can move to our next case. Uh, which is going to be case 20, SU 28, uh, petition of Elijah Parker for a special use to allow for the construction of an accessory structure that exceeds the total allotted space uh, footage for accessory structure on property located at 200 Newman Lane. That's pin 0505032040021. I assume you're Elijah. Uh, and your home address? 200 in the lane. Okay, and raise your hand. Okay, so I'm sorry to tell you to look yourself again. Yep. Okay, what's going on there? Uh, I just want to build a detached structure there in the back of my property. Okay. Uh, it's going to be close to the neighbor's property, is, is that right? Or? No, there's nobody close back there's there. We all have close back there? about at least an acre property. Is that, road, is that a road that runs back there? Or? Uh, it's an easement, yep. It's an easement road? Yep. All right. I'll be uh, probably about 20 feet off of that or so, and I could be anywhere off of the north side property line as far as you wanted me to be as well. So. And the building will not, will not be close to a neighbor, okay. Nope. Right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Belinda, we want to start with you. Any questions? I don't think so. Okay. Again. Okay. Now at the other end. Gina. In our information, it does say that this is for non-business use, but what is the main purpose of this new building? Uh, I got three boys that have a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I like to keep my stuff somewhat organized. So, Is there a specific reason then on why this building has to be so big and or tall? Uh, you know, I wanted to be able to, my kids are into baseball and stuff, I wanted to be able to maybe have them have a little batting cage in there or something, you know, kind of like uh, two foot itis, you know, I wish I would have went two foot bigger, so <laughs> might as well go for the gusto and then you guys tell me, yeah, you're nay, you know. Gotcha. Um, the bid doesn't say, the bid that you've submitted with plans says nothing about drainage, septic, HVAC, or sprinklers um, being need. as a part of their estimate. Are those things that you are considering installing? Um, no, I don't. No bathrooms, no AC, no sprinkler system? No. Well, I don't know what I'd need that for. If I got boys, if they got to pee, there's woods everywhere right there. All righty then. <laughs> Are there any drainage concerns from the neighbors? Uh, no. That you're aware of? No, no. Any noise from machinery that would be used in the building? Uh, no, no, no. There's, the, there's nobody close to me, really. I mean, I think we all got about 200. 50 feet wide by 250 deep, and then behind me is 17 plus acres that's empty that that easement goes to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's nobody, there's nobody close. And you know, uh, 
to the to the south of me is all county and then right when you come to me is all city so i mean as as glenn told me you're i'm a victim of boundary lines you know so mm -hmm. the guy right next to me can put up whatever he wants but 200 feet down i can't you know so if the building is um, approved to be this big would you be coming back and asking for additional parking poured parking spaces or anything like that no 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 because i i own uh 30 feet on the other side of that road as well so i mean if any i, I don't foresee 50 people going back there to hang out you know my kids are probably 18 drinking beers back there but no, I'm joking, you know. I don't I don't foresee anybody going back there besides us, you know. So. Okay. I that might be all. Thank you. I don't know. You got anything? Don, you got anything? No, I don't have anything right now. Yeah, I got a Thank couple you. things. Um, the so this is for special use for uh, the area limitations, is that correct, Ty? The square footage, yes. Square footage. Okay. Um, the height of the building, I think we're looking at sixteen foot tall. Is that is that, oh, I'm just curious if that's allowed that. It's got to, if it's taller than the home, then it would need to have a special use. Okay. I mean, it would, whether it be included in this one or not, but that's, I don't know that we contemplated the height. It was just the size. Yeah. Okay, I was just curious. 16 feet tall? Uh, it's probably over that, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was, just, I was just curious on that. Um, I was out there the other day and everything matches real nice your existing outbuilding. What are you looking to do in terms of colors or uh, how are you Like I told Glenn, I, if you guys want the same finish on there, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would like to do stand up rib, but I won't even Okay. just do the building and I'll make it look however you want okay. it to look. Okay. <laughs> and the, the other thing I had is just a comment, a side comment. I noticed on page three of your uh, building proposal here, they're looking at an assumed soil bearing capacity of 4,500 pounds per square foot. Did you guys have any uh, soil testing out there or anything for that? No, but I, I can get it done though. Well, no, I'm, the, the only reason I ask is, I, this is just a recommendation, is I would question them on that 4,500. That seems, that seems high. Okay. And so I, I'm not sure why it's that high. I was looking at the International Residential Code today, and their charts don't even go past 4,000. So it might be something you might inquire yeah. on them and see why they're, uh, they're that high, but it maybe might be a good idea to be lower than that. Yeah. Well, I'm, so. not, I'm not too concerned about what they think. I'm just going to be in the parameters of what City East Peoria uh, wants to be. Well, and, and that's just a side note. It has nothing to do with what we're doing here tonight. It's just um, yeah. trying to get you a quality building. All right, I think that's we're all done. I have. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Anybody wants to speak either for or against the petitioner? Seeing none, go on to our next case. Just two to go. 20 SU 29, petition of Roy Source of Source Enterprises to allow for the operation of a recreational cannabis dispensary on property located at 300 South Main Street. That's pen 010132 403 Who's going to speak for Roy? Right here. Oh, okay. Uh, so, Jared Vogel, <laughs> six. Okay. Oh, yeah, and your home address? Uh, 613 Mickle, M I C K E L, Parkway, Washington, Illinois. Okay, raise your right hand. He's all in the the truth, the truth, so the guy. Yes, sir. And go ahead. Uh, so we're just seeking a petition. Obviously, the zoning board knows we were seeking a petition for the previous location uh, that was down off of Cat, Cat Trail. So we uh, got the South 100, uh, uh, 300 South Main Street, which is right over here by the Firehouse Pizza, and we're seeking tonight the recreational dispensary to be allocated over there. Yeah, That's, much better location than the last one. We're working on it. We're working on it. All right. And I drew the short straw tonight. Sorry, Roy couldn't be here. He's actually over at the Farm Bureau. All right. Uh, I guess, Gina, you want to start this one? Sure. <laughs> so looking at that building that also contains 300 South Main, are you planning on moving into just 300 South Main or the entire building that encompasses like 298 and 302 and 304? So the plan right now is we're leasing 
uh, what we have outlined in our application, and that is the only space uh, that we're planning to lease and leaving the other tenants there. Okay. We do have a plan, though, to lease to buy if we decide to, and that would include the entire property. And then when is the tenant in the little house out front slated to move out if we, it looks like they've either proposed or, or considered um, having that little building demolished? Uh, for the little, bit, uh, little building, and I think Jeff is here, they are on a month-to-month -month basis, correct? So they are on a month-to-month -month lease basis, and uh, we have no plans to utilize that building for our, our uses. Have you heard from any of the neighboring businesses or Kroger or any of the neighbors? Oh, we have not. Okay. That's all I have. Go ahead, Eddie. You ready? I'm okay. I, he answered all the questions that I would pursue. Thank you. Hey, Don, how are we doing? So when you say the entire building, uh, what do we, what do we, you, you say your, the potential is to use the entire building. What are we talking about up there? Yeah. Uh, so Jeff can come help me explain this a little bit because it's quite tricky with this property. Okay. Well, I, that was a good question then, I guess. Yes, huh? it was. <laughs> you already been for and go ahead. <laughs> you want to swear it again? No, well, I don't know. It's a different case. Jeff Gablehausen, 1105 Fond du Lac Drive. I actually was here last month uh, at the council meeting when Roy ended up getting a uh, denied. I had never met Roy before. We ended up talking a few days afterwards and I ended up helping him identify this location uh, just through mutual friends. So basically uh, this is the old builders cash and carry for anybody that, that isn't familiar. Uh, the building has a lot of square footage. Um, far, far more than they would ever need for their dispensary operation. So you got to view it essentially as a multi-tenant with the main entrance where it says 300 is where when you enter into the building, you know, that's kind of the front of, or enter into the parking lot, that's kind of the front door. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you uh, gravitate over toward 304, 306, 308, those will be other tenants probably forever. Even if they purchase the property, I don't think there is any expectation that they'd ever expand into that size of operation. Uh, so even the, uh, the depth of the 300 building, uh, I don't think, um, you know, they've made any decision as to how deep they might ultimately go, but I think that's probably where they would grow would be more into depth than anything. Does that? Yeah. And, and how about the, uh, the, the, the back buildings on that, the, the end, the triangular piece there? Yeah, way back there. Is the, that the, the basically dry storage? Is that? Uh, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's lean twos, right? They're, they're dry storage, and I don't think they have okay. given any thought to what would ultimately happen in those. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Belinda, any questions? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, how, if you're only going to use that one section, how much of that parking are, is, is going to be allowed for your for your? Uh, so with the park, uh, I'm very cautious about parking so after the last zone board meeting. So the front would be used for parking, and then, like Jeff was saying, is the 300. So we could use all of the current lot right there for additional parking if we would desire. And that's all available to you? Yes. Okay. All right, I think that's it. Thank you. Anybody like to speak for or against the petitioner? All right, let's get to the last case. Uh, case uh, 20 v 30, uh, petitioner Rex and Joel McMorris for a setback variance of two feet to allow for the placement of a paved area on property located at 101 Regal Lane. That's pin 010123 uh, 203015. Uh, Rex can speak. Yep. Uh, yeah, Rex McMorris, 101 Regal Lane, East Peoria only. And raise your right hand, so I'm sorry to tell the truth, the whole truth self you got. Yes. And go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, I got a three car garage, and uh, as you can see on the picture there, um, I got my daughter and my wife both drive also, my daughter's 17, and we're just jogging in cars. Also, I can't tell what's in that, it's not when I owned it, but anyway, I have a boat that also I currently use, and uh, I'm just asking to be able to bring the, the three-car garage straight to the road, which is not really what I'm here for, but that's going to be okay. But to come up the side of the house to the gate, 
and uh, concrete that, which I wanted to go the full amount to my property line to make it to where I could park the boat there and I can also keep it out of the view of other people for one thing and then um, also I have an access door on my garage that's right there and then the gate to get to my backyard right there access it so in order for me to be able to go out of that door and walk down through there and get through the gate and stuff it would be a lot easier if I can use that two foot to go to the property line. So how long have you lived there? I've lived there just a little over a year. Okay. So you knew the situation before you moved in? Kind of. Yeah, you had to have a hardship to get a, to get a variance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't park my boat at my house. I have to pay to, park, to have it stored yeah. somewhere. But uh, also... That, that's pretty just, much going to be your problem, I think. Yeah. Uh, we can't grant you a, a variance unless you can really show some kind of a hardship. Well, uh, like I said, I mean... I can just park in the road, I guess, but I really don't want to put the boat in the road. I mean, people don't really want to see that, I'm trying to keep from doing that. All right. Uh, keep picking on Gina. Do you want to go first again? <laughs> I want... don't have any questions. I just have concerns, and um, obviously I see kind of a pattern here is I think it looks like the, the between the two yards, it slopes down a little bit. I would be terribly concerned about um, drainage and soil issues. Um, may not be obvious until after it's installed, and then you'd cause either water runoff or watershed into the street because you've got so much concrete there. Um, I guess I'm not crazy about the idea, and I kind of support what Dino just said. Is um, you know, it, there's no hardship. It's not like the topography of your lot is causing you to you know come and ask that. So. No questions, just my thoughts out loud. Okay, Ed. Yeah, I agree with her also. Um, in like Gina said, you're, you're really you're probably growing out of the house because it's not big enough for what you need. But No, the house is plenty big. Well, I mean, not the house, but the household. How's that? <laughs> Kids and everything else. So anyway, no, we, I don't think we could do that. Thank you. John, you got something? Yeah, and I I, uh, I understand what you're saying about jockeying around. Uh, when I came out there on Saturday, you were doing exactly that, too. Yeah, you yeah. were coming in and out. Um, uh, there was a big white pickup truck or something That's right That's there one. out there. Yep. Um, the question I have is, how, how far are you from your uh, your house to the property line? What's, do we know what that dimension is? It is. I, I can't give you an exact measurement, but it's like 11 feet. Okay. And then Roughly. so the variance here is to go all the way to the property line because the, uh, the zoning code is uh, two feet. Is that correct, Ty? We're two feet here as well. Okay, so, so he, the gentleman could do nine feet then of, yeah. of, of paving. I can do nine foot. I'm asking to get the extra two foot. You what? The extra two foot. You're wanting more, the extra two feet. Yeah, yeah. just, no, I, I mean, all these bigger is better, right? No, I Plus, it would give me more room to walk beside the boat when I walk down through there. Sure. Okay. How so, wide is the, how wide is the boat? The boat yeah. is uh, roughly, I think the hull's like sixty four inch. I, I don't know exactly. Okay. I was just. But curious. I'll be parking cars over there too. Yeah, if yeah. I have to or whatever to pull yeah. off to get out of the way. So you know what I mean. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So. Okay. So you could you could um, pour nine foot of, of concrete. I can. And, yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. And. So what she said earlier, I, I'm sorry, Gina said, um, for the runoff and everything like that, there's not much of a slope until you get to where the the, pole, the, the Y is, right there where it is there, no, right there at that point of the driveway where it cuts up. Oh, right. Nope, up more and more, right there. Nope, up, come up, right where you're just at. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's where the slope starts. So to me, bringing it over and going up to seven foot, or the, the, the nine, nine foot, foot and coming up i don't understand what difference another two foot of concrete is going to make well it's the i mean that is what the the code is right now is the I two foot that. and yeah. so that's why you're here is for that extra yep. two feet so the, another question is if i can't get the 11 foot then i can pour nine foot and then can i put white rock the other two foot to the property line You can do that. It's not to be used to be parked on, though. The, the parking surfaces are to be hard surfaced. Okay. 
That's all the questions I have. Uh, Belinda, did you have anything? I do not. All right, thanks. All right, I think we're done. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody here to speak either for or against the petitioner? Okay. Looks like we can go on to deliberations. Does anybody need a break? <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Yeah, I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. Let's go. Okay. 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 Um, we don't have a sheet on the city case. Is, just a, is that just a voice vote? Correct. Okay, does anybody uh, have any comments? <laughs> Back to the beginning. Uh, case 20A22, petition of the City of East Peoria to amend uh, Title V, Chapter 8, Section 2 of the East Peoria City Code, addressing special uses in conservation and residential uh, estate districts. No questions? No. All right. Recommendation. Motion to pass it. Motion to pass it. Okay. Uh, Got a second? I make a motion that we pass it. Second that, Don? I second it. Don seconds it. Uh, just a voice vote. Aye. Hang on real quick. So we're going to add Gina's suggested language of uh, contiguous 10 acres. That was something she had brought up. Is that okay to the yes. motioner? And oh, the second. Okay. I, okay. I think that's important. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <laughs> Thank you. Don't need to sign anything, right? Okay. Um, case uh, 20 SU 23, it's a petition of Derek and Holly uh, Grievings for Special Use to allow tree farming on property located off Brim Court. Uh, that's pin 1124 305 004. Uh, any discussions? Yeah, I've got a couple things. I think the width of the easement was one of the questions we had we, we we think it's 50 foot but um, we don't know exactly how far it goes and then uh, there was one lady in here I don't think she's here uh, it's asked about uh, had brought up the legal access who has access to get back to your property through that and um, I don't think that was ever addressed uh, one way or the other so I don't know um, the answer to that uh. Do you have an extra copy or just a? Actually, I probably have them electronically. I was planning to email them tonight, but I can give you these copies if you would like them tonight. Uh, we're assuming that the easement goes to the, uh, the full entrance, right? Yeah, I actually, so I, there are two. One was in 07 and one was in 2010. So I had the 07 <laughs> one out in the discussion, and this one was laying right behind it. Uh, again, yeah, I'm going to grab it. Grab it. Okay. We're going to assume that the easement is 50 foot and goes goes to the entrance to their property. Do you guys want to just pass those? Oh, get copies? Uh, just, oh, just get one. Okay, okay. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. Well, it's going to take a while to study it. Go ahead and look at that one. I'll look at this one. Is this the 10? This is the 10. There's a drawing. But even 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 2000, I can't tell. Yeah, well, it's dashed in there. And it does it does get a, it does appear to get a lot narrower as you get to the street as well. When, when you say the widest, are you talking about the pavement or the? Correct. Okay. Correct. Absolutely. Like it's so, more than two vehicles side by side along and up at the front okay. where the road or the gotcha. cul de sac is. Mm -hmm. When you get down to the back of the property, uh, mm -hmm. to east or west yeah. of that, it's, it's about. Two I know what you're saying. Yeah, and the, the easement isn't the isn't the hard surface. The easement is the uh, amount of property that's been allotted for that. Sure. So if they needed to dig and put a pipe underneath or something next to the road, then that easement is there for them to be able to do that. Are you the expert, Ed? Or? That one looks very similar. It's dashed as well. Yeah, let's see if it's on this team. Yeah. It 
issue is I think that, that the issue in this respect, you've got a drawing here, of course, but we don't know if they time. put that on the drawing. In other words, there should be some stakes there that they need to locate as to where they actually put this at. It's drawing on the ground. So you're saying they have pins for the easement? It's like when you build a house, you, when you build a house, you got to have the stakes in the ground in order to really find out where it's at. You can have a drawing of where it's supposed to be. Yeah, but this property was used by public works, right? So there's got to be at least wide enough for a vehicle to get in there, right? Well, this is the access point for the, uh, the sewer treatment facility, which is owned by Illinois American at the bottom of the hill, which is adjacent to this property. So it is utilized. I, I don't know that it's utilized that much by the city. I know recently we've had some activity there, but typically it's another entity that's if you're done. getting access to it. So how about the, uh, the legal access? Do we know anything about that? Who, who has access those, to that? Other than what's in those documents, I don't know. I know that a previous property owner had access across this as well. Okay, because the one lady said there was the, the only access was from um, the uh, I mean, it looks the like Illinois. A legitimate easement. The point is, you don't know until they put. And I do, I do have a plat of the pinned locations of the lower well, section of that. We can make a motion we subject to once we lost subject the property, to. If that is yeah, subject to locating pins on the property. That doesn't. That, that's great to have. Do you want to make that a condition of the, the yeah, special use? Would be yeah, I would you want to make a proposal to have the regular pins showing the exact location of that easement? Because it's going to be a challenge. I mean, why don't you go ahead and neighbor preserve it? I mean, they got make the drawing, which is great. So they just give it to the survey engineers and tell them to stake it out. Make a motion. What, should we go through the, the finding of facts? Yeah, I don't, is there anything else we got to make? Uh, I don't know, Gene, did you have something that's signed immediately? Yes, yeah, Okay. You okay? <laughs> well, I'll make a motion that we approve it. Well, hang on, oh, we haven't gone through the, the finding of facts. We need to go through the finding of facts for this case. This is for yeah. a special use. And then you make a motion after we've gone through the finding of facts. Can't hear you. We need to go through the fine. We've got to do this first. We need to go through the whole list first before we make a motion. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Procedural. Procedural. Okay. I'm an old man. Take Details. it easy on me. <laughs> okay. Will the establishment, maintenance, and operation of the proposed special use permit be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, morals, temperance, or general welfare? Uh, that's yeah. a no, right? Anybody else? You're going, you're, so again, we're reading these. Yes or no to our finding the facts. Oh, oh, okay. okay. So, so okay. we need. I'm sorry. Yes, yes so, or no. So speak up. You can speak out and. Yeah, you can say no. I just need to notate it. Oh, so I know. Well, I'm going to say yes. Okay. So we have one yes. Yes. I'm a no. I'm going to say yes. And you got Belinda behind you. Belinda, what was your vote? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you heard me. No. Will the uh, proposed yes. special use permit be injurious to the use or enjoyment of other properties in the immediate vicinity for use is permitted in the district? No. I'm a no. Three more. Oh, am I still? Yeah, I, I, need, I need the rest of the room. Yeah, we well, got mine. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'll that? say no. No? I'm going to say no. Okay. Yes. Okay. Will the uh, special uh, use permit diminish or impair property values within the surrounding neighborhood? No, because it was there before. No. I'm a no also. It was there before. Two more? No. No, I said no. Okay. Okay, on the end? Will the establishment of the proposed special use permit impede the orderly development or improvements of surrounding properties for uses permitted in the subject zoning district? 
No. no. I'm no. No. Okay, our or have adequate utilities, access, roads, drainage, and other necessary facilities been provided? Yes. I need two more yeses. No yes. Okay, so yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say no. Gonna say, I'm, I'm going to say no on that one. No. Okay. No, okay. No. Three to two. Are or have adequate measures been taken to provide ingress and egress from the site, minimizing traffic congestions and hazards on public streets? No. No. I'm saying no, too, because we have to prove it. I would have to say no on that one. Wow. Yeah. I would say yes on that one. Okay. Will, will the proposed uh, special use permit conform to all other applicable regulations of the zoning district? That, that's the recommended proposal. I'm a yes. 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 Okay, we need a motion. You know, Make a motion to approve her design. The problem is, oh, can we talk about it now? Huh? Can we talk about, talk about what we said? And, oh, okay. All right. Okay. The only issue I have is, is a couple things I said no on because it's not proven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and right. so can we make a motion that way and then put in there that we, can we, make a subject we to, need to prove approval? To, to the, that's what I'm saying. To the roads, uh, whether yeah, it's going to be wide right. enough. I mean, that's really the only objection, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's my major uh, objection. Is, I mean, the land is virtually useless for any other purpose. No, it's uh, been used that way, there. so I'm not, I'm not and they're just issue that. For I don't, hobby. Issue I don't that. Really see going to feel all that detrimental to the neighborhood. But we want to make sure that the easement is proper and it's correct and the location of it. Yeah, so you can make a motion subject to Okay. To, to getting a... I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Either we'll make a motion. Yeah, okay. I'll make a motion that we approve it subject to um, stipulations of staking out the survey do you want an actual survey, easement. or do you just want to confirm what, what's there? Well, that's what they're going to do. They're going to stake it out. And so the easement needs to be verified and staked out. Yeah. When it's staked out and is that proven correct? that that's where it's at. So the neighbors know where that's at. Otherwise, everybody's guessing that 100 years you've been using that driveway. doesn't mean that's the right place. They do have a survey, so if they can use that to verify it's in the right place. Yeah. Okay, so the motion is... It's a long to one. recommend approval with the exception. I need a yeah. second on that. Anybody want to second it? No. I'll second that. All right. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my battery's dying on my laptop. Call the room when you're ready. Dean Oring. Yes. Don Tippett. Yes. Ed Zaski. Yes. Gina Driscoll. No. Belinda Young. Yes. Oh. And then the next case, the petitioner did not appear. Case 2024 is, is, didn't show up, so we're going to go to case uh, 20V25, um, petition of Rodney Slusher of CNG Concrete on behalf of Richard and Judy Cap for a setback variance of two foot to allow for the placement of a paved area on property located at 100 uh, Longview Court. Uh, that's pen 1127409008. Will the uh, will a significant hardship result 
uh, to the owner if the strict letter of the regulations are carried out given the particular physical surrounding shapes or topography conditions of the property? No. 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 I don't know. Oh, yeah. Wasn't this, yeah, this was the handicap. Will a significant hardship result to the owner if a strict letter of the regulations are carried out? If the letters are carried out? No. You guys are all no. for that? Yeah. No. Yeah. That pretty much ends that then. Uh, is it an inconvenience to the property owner to follow regulations of the ordinance? Yes. Yes. Is the variance request based on the uniqueness of the property? I'd say yes. Yes. Is the yeah. variance based exclusively on desire to make more money out of the property? No. 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 Will the variance be injurious to other properties or improvements in the neighborhood? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Would it not? No. Be? It won't be, is it? Is it going to be? Well, there are drainage issues on the drainage the over the road. Would that be? Okay, whatever you're. Well, uh, again, I, mean, I don't we think so. Here. I just yeah. To, I, so I guess who's, who's, a, who's a yes and who's a no? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Ed? No. No? <laughs> Do you know? Do you I'd know? say no. No. Belinda? I was a no also. No? Okay, so the no was seven. Has the alleged difficulty or hardship been created by any persons presently having an interest in property and thus self-imposed? No. 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 Is everybody in agreement with the no? Right. No. I what did you say? I said no. Okay. No. Will the proposed variance impair the adequate supply of light and air to adjacent properties? <laughs> no. 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 The proposed variance increased congestion on public streets. No. 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 Proposed no. variation uh, create additional traffic safety problems. Uh, no. 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 Will the proposed variance increase danger of fire to adjacent structures? No. 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 Will the proposed no. uh, variance substantially diminish or impair property values within the immediate neighborhood? No. 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 Uh, will the variance be detrimental to or endanger public safety, morals, comforts, or general welfare? No. 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 Would the variance request be generally applicable to other properties within the immediate area? No. 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 Uh, I don't know. No. Uh, back to it. Back to number one. Will a significant hardship? To the owner of the strict letter of the regulations are carried out given the particular physical surrounding shape and type of the property. I, I guess uh, the handicapped person, uh, did you take that into consideration? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I guess we didn't. I can change my mind. Uh, if we have a no on the first one, then it's a yeah. No, yeah. I, I it's say no yeah. on everything. I say yes. I mean, I'm still a no on the first I one. I changed mine. Huh? I changed mine to yes. Yeah, mine's a yes also, because it was because of the hardship. It will be a hardship for the people. Okay, so what is it going to have? Gina, did you vote? Well, the, the unpermitted driveway was poured to give them access into their house. Right. And the additional does. sidewalk was poured to give lawn care workers the ability to get a push mower to the front yard, and it's not even a, a flat, flush, uh, cement to grass so to me the hardship is with the sidewalk and that has nothing to do with the owner of the property the owner of the property can now get in and out of their house via the unpermitted poured uh, driveway right the additional two feet that goes up to the property line up to a chain link fence so you don't think that affects it at all I do I said will it will a significant hardship result to the owner if the strict letter of the regulations are carried out meaning we allow, we ask them to take out the sidewalk, correct? Mm -hmm. The sidewalk's only there for lawn care people to go to the front yard. 
has nothing to do with the homeowner. The homeowners can get in and out of their house now with the unpermitted driveway that was poured. So you're thinking. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in full agreement with that. That's why I said no as well. Um, I, it's a great project uh, for the homeowner. Uh, fantastic to help them out. But that two foot, from what I see, uh, is is for access for convenience to the front yard and, and really not a, a part of the uh, it's the homeowners it's access for the homeowners to be able to get to the front yard they've never been able to get to okay well there's still a step down from the cement sidewalk there is a, to the there grass is a little step down you're correct you're correct but they're they're able to get there you're saying she really is for get sure able step, to get there and down. she's for sure able to take her dogs out there that she they never could before and he could get there because he has went down several flights of stairs, but it's not something that he's going to uh, to access a lot. No, but he is. He would be able to get to his front lawn that he's never been able to get to before. With that stuff being, if we remove that two feet, the dogs can go out still, the backyard. You still have the same height of of elevation uh, it, the only thing that two feet does is put our chip on me uh, yeah. at that point I guess yeah thank you right I yeah. no, understand okay so back to the vote no. sorry okay. back to the vote just so that I, I I've got okay. it so I can confirm yeah I the understand. vote for number one so the vote for number one so I have Don for a no I have Gina for a no I'm a yes Dano's a yes I'm a yes Ed's a yes Linda? Yes. Yes? Okay. So yes. I correct that. That is a yes. Have a motion? Okay. You want to do it, Dean? Uh, motion. I'll make a motion to deny the request and ask the homeowner and the concrete contractor to remediate the issue. Should have been a yes to with the should have, yes was a subject to the they removed as opposed to a no. Do you need a second or what do we need now? I mean, no, because I don't two, think there's yeah, a significant it, hardship right. to the owner. The no, owner is said, the homeowner, said, not the said, owner. Said, I'll, said, I'll I'll second it. Yes. Okay. 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 So it's been seconded. So the, the subject the to motion made is to deny the variance request. See, so that's what I'm saying. I should have said yes and then. Basically, with the homeowner or with the concrete guy, subject to the contract, so. taking you're really moving this step. Well, I think we need now to probably hear a plan or propose what that remediation is. Okay, I'm not gonna tell a concrete guy what go ahead and do. call the roll when you're ready. Okay, roll call Dino Ori, no, Don Tippett, yes, Ed Zaski. Are we saying? This is, to deny. this is denied. This is to deny. So I say yes. Yes is a deny. Do you deny. want to take the concrete? No, no, no is a bad. No. Okay, no. Okay. no. Gina Driscoll. Yes. Belinda Young. Yes. So it's yes to deny, is that what you said? Yes to deny the, can we, can she hear us? She said yes. It's hard for her to understand. Linda, your vote was to deny, correct? To deny the variance. <laughs> yes, it is, for the, for the two feet, yes. Okay. Oh, yes or deny. Okay. So I'll make sure she knew what she was voting for. That's what the neighbor said. 
just all he has to do is we have to is that a, does he still go to the console or not? No, no. You are the final decision. This doesn't have variance. So it does not have the variance. So come back with a better plan. Huh? Just come back with a better plan. No, that's okay. This was was what it is. That's okay, what it is. Uh, moving on that's to what case you do. Uh, twenty V twenty six petition of Joseph and Rebecca Malaschek for setback variance to allow for the placement of a privacy fence in the front yard of property located at one twenty two South Euclid. That's pin oh five oh five one one two oh four oh one oh. Uh, same thing will significant hardship result to the owner if the strict letter of regulations are carried. Hang on. Can we uh, discuss it a bit yeah, before that? Sooner or later, go ahead. Um, the, I, I, and I apologize for interrupting. I, the question I have is um, the petition is to allow for the fence front yard. Have we figured out how far? Can we let him go? Yeah, we're letting him go. Or is that something that we would do? I assume that's something we uh, would No, if they stay do. within the regulations, we, they, don't, they don't need a, a special Right, use but they're, right, wanting, right. To go, they're right. wanting to go further, maybe up further to the further. property line, but we can probably dictate how far they were to go. That's my thought, too, but can't we? Yes. Can we dictate? Yes. Okay. You can. And do you we can know if the setback? Can special use? Excuse me. All right. Excuse me. You can give them a partial or just halfway or something? So when we looked at variances before, I think of, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that we have these very houses, you know, where the housing setbacks are at here. They're not all 30 feet. That there are cases where we've considered a variance for housing setbacks. If you have other houses on that street that are 20 feet from the lot line and not 30, is that the established setback line that we permitted homes to be closer than that typical 30 feet? So the consideration here would be, you know, code would say it can go to the front of their house. You know, is there a scenario if you see, a, if you recall the, the aerial for that, that area, you had the neighbor's home that was discussed quite a bit tonight and the other neighbors that are on that same block, yeah. they all sit up closer, <clears throat> excuse me, than the other, than this house does. Right. Do we know if that setback is 30 feet at this property? Can we just go to the... We, we can measure it here quickly. Can, can we just so, so say... You're, you're asking what the... Other, so how far the, back are these other houses? homes are, yeah. So he can go to... He, they can take the fence up to the up to their house, but their house seems to be set back further from the property line than it would... Uh, than the setback is. So I'm just curious how where the setback is at. On the other ones. Yeah, how is that 30 foot there to the neighbor? Yeah, yeah, I mean... The, 38. The neighbor's, front of the neighbor's house to... Almost 40. Almost, yeah, the front of the Okay. Front of the now measure their house. And from their house to this. So then we could make a decision to yeah. allow them to take yeah. that fence. The, the other thing is, though, uh, you're setting a precedent, and once they, uh, yeah. once that special use is allowed, then one or the other moves away, the fence is still going to be there. And the homeowner next door can still walk around the fence and have access to their property and so if part of the reason um is the homeowner doesn't feel safe being in her home alone i don't think a fence is going to stop the next door neighbor from coming around the fence and still yelling and making her feel unsafe i don't think the fence is the only thing the fence is going to solve is maybe the eyesore part of the property i really don't think it's going to stop the next door neighbor from walking out into the street or around the fence regardless of how far we allow them to install it to cause the issues that she's apparently causing. My concern. I would allow them to go to whatever the ordinance allows and maybe finish off the rest with some landscaping or something, but I don't think that's going to solve the problem. Is the problem. And then we've set a precedent. Okay, let's go on through this and then we'll make a, somebody can make a motion. Uh, will a significant hardship result to the owner if the strict letter of the regulations are carried out given the particular physical surrounding shape and topographical uh, conditions of the property. Yes. Yes. Will a significant hardship result to the owner if strict letter Did you hear what Belinda said? That's, that's, she, said she said no, correct? Yeah, it's no. no. So two yeses and three no's. 
is it an inconvenience to the property owner to follow regulations of the of the uh, ordinance? Yes. Yes. No. I said no. It's not an inconvenience by definition. Do you know what, it, what was your vote? No. So again, two yeses and three well, noes. Yeah. I don't know. I was going yes. Is the variance request based on the uniqueness of the property? Nope. No. No. Is the variance no. based exclusively on the desire to make money out of the property? No. No. Will the variance be injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood? Yes. Yes. Um, has the alleged? Do you know, do you know what's yours? Because I got two. I yes. had yes on that also. Yes. Which one was it? Five. It was five. You're on five? Okay. Are we all in agreement that it's a yes? Has the alleged difficulty or hardship been created by any person presently having an interest in the property and thus self imposed? I said no. no. Okay. No. Well, no. no, I guess. Do you have no. vote? Then? Well, the proposed uh, variation impair the adequate supply of life yeah, you there to adjacent properties. That'd be a no. 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 The proposed variation increased congestions on public streets. No. 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 Will the proposed uh, variance create additional traffic safety problems? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, yes, I'll go with them. Will the proposed variation increase the danger of fire to adjacent structures? No. 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 Will the proposed variance be substantially diminished or impair property values within the immediate neighborhood? That was no, too. No? No. No. Will the variance be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, morals, or general comfort? No. Yeah. No. It's good. No. Safety? Uh, no. Yes. I go yes, safety. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. I'm yes, sorry. Yes. Safety. So I have. So, sorry. Can we, so. Yes. Dino, are you a yes? I, I was a no. So you're a no. Okay, Don, you're yes. a yes. 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 Safety yes. problem. Yeah. Yes. Okay. With the variance, uh, generally be applicable to other properties in the immediate area. Yes. Wouldn't we be setting precedent? Well, does precedence mean it'd be generally applicable, though? I don't know. That's, I, I, I don't know. I absolutely Good agree with you. I have the same question, but I don't know if... With the variance request... It, it, be it, it doesn't become a, a rule that everybody else can do it, you know what I mean? True. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It probably would become a regular... It could be. I think so, yes. I think it could be. We, we don't want it, but I think it could be. I think that's the perception from some yeah. of the concerns that we heard. Yeah, I agree with you there, yeah. yeah. So do Especially we, from that gal. So I would say yes on 13. Yes. 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 So I got two yes. yeses. Gina, is a yes. I uh, know. That's a no. No. Belinda, yes or no on number 13? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, so yes. Have it. Okay, any further discussion or does somebody want to make a motion? Well, I guess the only question I have is um, how far you want me to go? Yeah, are we are we going to say no? They can only go to the front of their house, or are we going to allow them something? Do you want to make a motion to that effect? It, let I'm me ask you a like question. Gina, yes. I think that no matter how far you go, it's still going to be a problem. And if you go too far, then you have a safety issue. So if we start making variances for one reason, there's 50 others. I think it's a problem for the one, homeowners, I, but I think it's a oh, problem that the East Peoria Police yeah. Department needs to help them resolve. Yeah. So you just got to you can't, you you can't speak at all. Oh no. No, you can't no, speak sorry, at all. Sorry. Anyway. Sorry. Oh. sorry, no testimony. I apologize. Let me ask a question. Sure, go ahead. Is there? house the right setback right now 
No, their house is a bit back. No, it's 60 feet back. The others so are in what, right around 40, right? So we're saying it's okay if they put the fence. Well, that's what we could. Feet off the. No, they can only go to the front of their house. No, I mean. The motion I may do it would be to allow them to go to the setback. setback, of what their setback so, so let me give you an example though. So if you had the neighbor who came in and said, "I'd like to do a privacy fence," she could bring it up to the front of her house. Oh, I see. But can't she bring it to the setback normal for her house? No, no. The privacy fence would not normally be permitted out in the front yard. There, that it, it's that front plane of the house oh, establishes that point. The front yard when you put your house but the back distinction the here is you've got 20 feet difference between the front of the petitioner's house versus <coughs> the front of the neighbor's house. Are there other houses in the area that are 30 feet? That's the I, mean, the, I think this area was annexed prior to uh, being in the city, so it was constructed before it was brought in the city. Right. So I think you have a lot of unusual um, lot creations right. out here. So Quite it, a variety. It sounds to me like it's either uh, only go to the front of their house or I've brought up, and I don't know if anybody else has, to go to the setback line, whatever that might be. Um, and so you asked if I... Mo you give me make a motion. To make a motion. Um, yes, I will make a motion to go to the setback line with the fence. So the Point for clarification: Are you saying do the setback line established by the other homes, or are you saying the standard thirty foot? Do we know it's thirty foot? Well, the the code standard is thirty foot setback for single family residential. Here it measures at uh, right right about 40 feet. Okay. What was that measurement? What was that measurement to her house approximately? Uh, from the street initial from from the proper from the property line to the I assume the setback is from the property line, correct? Correct. Yes. So from here to here, it's roughly 40 feet, and then so but it would be from so from. Okay. So I make the motion that it goes to the front of the neighbor's house, 38.6 feet or whatever dimension that is. Because when somebody builds a new house on that neighborhood, which we replaced one, they can go to the 30-foot setback. That's what you're telling me. If they, if, when they build, if they yeah. build a house, the they go 30 now, foot. So I build a new house right now. They can go to 30 feet. Mm -hmm. You could, although, you know, typically we'll look at that and say, you know, the, the established building line in the neighborhood is 40 feet back. Um, you know, I, I, I have experience from that myself building a house, and you, you look for that established. But yes, by, by code, they can come up to 30 feet. The, and, the, and, and somebody mentioned that the neighbor, this lady, could actually build, she could build a fence up to the front of her property. Is that correct? She, she could build that privacy yeah. fence up to the front plane of her she house. She could do it. Yeah. And so, so I'm making a motion that we allow them to build that. To the front of her house. To the front of her house. It'd be the equi equivalent to what she can do herself. That's true. Anybody want to second that? Nope. Yeah, I will. I'll second. Can't remember. Yeah, second. Okay, so Ed, do you want to second that? Yeah, I will. I'll agree with them. Maybe the only two. <laughs> okay. Call so the roll when you're ready. Dino? Yes. Don? Yes. Ed? Yes. Gina? No. Belinda? No. Okay, the yes is seven. Yes is seven. Get to me. What do you think? Okay. It's all quiet around here. It's like a on. funeral like that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Case 20, R27, petition of Jeff Gablehausen, a 4G EP LLC for the rezoning of property from business 3 
Service District to M4 Multifamily Dwelling District, located at 2480 Washington Street. That's PIN 0202 Yeah, R20, 20, R27. The people have, the people have well, the proposed. Hang on one second. Right. Got it? Yep. Will the, will the proposed uh, rezoning conform with existing uses of properties in the surrounding area? Probably a no, right? Is there any other multifamily? Well, there's residential. This is the only multifamily district, R4. This will work. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Because, okay. because of residential. Yeah. The tall oaks isn't that far. I'd say no. Yeah. I'm sorry, True. what was that? There's several apartments, right? Any one across the street. Is there? Will the proposed uh, zoning conform with the existing zoning to property in the surrounding area? Yes. 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 Is the property suitable for uses permitted under the proposed zoning district? That's a yes? Yes. Does the, last, does the lot possess one of the following, 200 foot of frontage, uh, 25,000 square feet, or adjoin a property with the same zoning classifications? Uh, two out of three would be a yes. Is it does it yes. have two of the, of the three? It has two of the three. Okay. Yeah, you just need one. Yeah. Does it have one? Yes. I, I don't yes. know. Okay. First two, I think. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Uh, with the proposed uh, rezoning be injurious to surrounding properties and, or improvements? <laughs> no? No. Okay. Uh, should be pretty standard. Does somebody want to make a motion? I will. Move that way. Approve. Ooh, I want to second this. Okay. <laughs> I want something positive. <laughs> 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 that no, we, that got to go to the city of East Bureau. It does. It needs to go to council. Ready for roll call? What's that? Ready for roll call? Yeah, go ahead. This, when you're this ready. does go to the council. It does. It goes to council. Okay. Yeah. Like and typically, uses. it goes a week and a day later. It's going to be uh, not until October sixth. We're on cycle this week, unfortunately, with the council meetings tomorrow night. Dina Ori. Yes. Don Tippett. Yes. Ed Zaski. Yes. Gina Driscoll. Yes. <laughs> yeah. She did on purpose. Belinda Young. No. <sighs> I gotta figure out how you spell your okay, name. Okay, uh, oh. better sign that, huh? Oh, yeah? Okay, now we're up to case 20, SU 28, petition of Elijah Parker for a special use to allow for the construction of an accessory structure that exceeds the total allotted square footage or an accessory structure on property located at 200 Newman Lane. That's PIN 050503 Will the establishment, maintenance, and operation of proposed special use permit be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, morals, comforts, or general welfare? That's a no? No. 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 Will the proposed special use permit be injurious to use of enjoyment of other properties in the immediate vicinity for uses permitted in the district? That's a no also? No. 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 Will the Proposed special use permit to diminish or impair property values within the surrounding neighborhood? No. 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 Will the establishment of a proposed special use permit impede the orderly development or improvements to surrounding properties or uses permitted in the zoning district? No. 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 Or have adequate uh, utilities, access, roads, drainage, or other necessary facilities been provided? Uh, that would be a yes? Yes. 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 Yeah. Or have adequate measures been taken to provide ingress and egress from the site, minimizing traffic congestions and hazards on public streets? Yes. 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 
or if the proposed yes to use conform to other applicable regulations of the zoning district. That would be a yes. yes. Is building height a, a zoning issue? Is building height a, zone, a zoning issue? It is when the accessory structure exceeds the height of the principal. As long as it doesn't exceed the height of the house. The height of the house, and we assume it doesn't at this point. Yeah. Uh, the indication from the property owner is that he's okay. higher than 16 feet. Okay. So my answer for number seven is yes. Uh, okay. Anybody want to make a motion? Mm -hmm. I'll make a yeah. motion to approve. Uh, Gina, would you like to... Uh, to add that the uh, barn matched the house, oh, somewhat siding or yes, or color wise at least. Yeah. In, in so, my opinion, can I have an opinion? Um, sure. Uh, color wise, I would agree. I don't know if I would go as far as making it. Um, no, something that aesthetically fits in. Yeah. Yeah. Code. I mean, the the, the house and the uh, accessory garage, anyway. right now is very very nice, but I, I don't know. If, if I would make him go that far with that, but but color wise at least, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, the other accessory structure is drive it, correct? I don't know. He said yes. Both of them are driving. Oh, drive it. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait, where'd you go? Um, I kind of agree with Don. I mean, I think color palette wise, um, stuccoing a big building like this or driving drive it on it seems rather. Expensive and for the location yeah, no, I, of the neighborhood, I'm not you, sure that's just something you, that fits in. You yeah. could do the front, the front facade if you wanted to. You can but paint them the same. Yeah, but I, 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 I said color. The homeowner, as far as aesthetics, but so I'll uh, make a motion to approve the request uh, with the condition that the color match be um, obviously similar or at least appealing to the rest of the property. Sounds good to me. I'll second that. Thank okay, you, Belinda. Okay, we have a second. Call yeah. the roll when you're ready. Linda Sanchez. Dino Ori. Yes. Don Linda Tippett. Sanchez. Yes. Ed Zaski. Yes. Gina Driscoll. Yes. Melinda Young. Yes. I'll vote in favor. Hmm. Okay. One more, huh? Two more. Oh, two more? Two more. Oh, yeah, two more. Yeah, we're going town here. Okay. We get a midnight break. Is that like this every time? No. 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 <laughs> I've been warned too many times. Yeah, we heard you were warned. <laughs> okay, uh, case. Yeah. 20 SU 29 petition of Roy Source of Source Enterprises to allow for the operation of a recreational cannabis dispensary on property located at 300 South Main Street, which is PIN 1132403003. Will the uh, establishment, maintenance, and operation of proposed special use permit be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, morals, comforts, or general welfare? No? No. No. Yes. One yes, four no's. Will the special use permit be injurious to uses or enjoyment of other properties in the immediate vicinity for uses permitted in the district? No. 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 Yes. Don, where do you stand on that one? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'll go yes on that one. Three yeses, or three no's and two yeses. Yes. For the proposed special use, uh, permit diminish or impair property value within the surrounding neighborhoods. No. 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 Gina. No. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Will the establishment of the proposed special use permit impede the orderly development or, or improvements of surrounding properties for uses permitted in the subject zoning district? No. No. Yes. Yes. No. Okay, three to two again. Uh, are or have adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, or other necessary facilities been provided? Well, that would be yes. a yes? Yes. Yes. 
or have, or have adequate measures been taken to provide ingress and egress on the site, minimizing traffic congestions and hazards on public streets? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yes. Uh, will the proposed special use permit conform to other, all other applicable regulations of the zoning district? Yes. 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 Any discussions or motions? Uh, uh, go ahead. I just want to, uh, can I go over the first one again? Well, the establishment maintenance of the operation of the proposed use be determined or endangered to the public safety or morals. So somebody said yes. I said no. Hmm. I said yes. Okay. That's what they feel, I guess. I'm good. Go ahead. My, my question, um, there are three licenses for this kind of thing in correct. Three. Is that correct. Now, it is, do they have one at this point and they're trying to find a location? Is that what is happening here? Could be I, I three different people. I don't know. That's you right. don't have one. I can speak to that. The lottery has not Okay. Okay, but this would be one of the three. That's He's what we're Subject to them getting a subject license. Subject to them getting a license. We have one okay. already. What's that? We have one already in town. Yeah. One in town. Okay. Understood. Now, we hope the lottery is in our favor. That's all I have. Okay. I need someone to make a motion. Uh, somebody interested? I don't know. Anybody? I can make a motion to deny. It, you, it's whatever you so choose. I, I can have a Go motion ahead. to deny or approve. I mean, anybody willing to second that a motion to deny? I have no problem with them doing what they're why, doing. Why are we denying it? Yeah, that's the motion's I, been made. I, I, I have to have someone second. Either second or it fails. Or it fails. Oh, somebody made a motion? Yeah. I said a motion to, I'm, I'm not going to make a motion to approve it. I, there was enough feedback at the last meeting. I've talked to enough people. I don't want the town I choose to live in to be known for three pot dispensaries well, and or whatever else three, we got going. Whether it's this one or another one anyway, so. And I may keep denying, I guess. <laughs> I have my right to vote, right? Yes, you do. That's why we have a board. I just, <laughs> I have constituents. I feel like I have to serve a certain part of the population that would feel like this is detrimental to East Peoria. So I'll, I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Ready for a roll call? Yes. Dina Ori? Uh, no. Don Tippett? We're denying, right? Correct. <laughs> yes. Ed Zosky? No. Gina Driscoll? Yes. Belinda Young? No. Motion fails or doesn't pass, so. I suppose we need a motion in the, in the affirmative to take to council. Excuse, Excuse me. me. So the people that voted no for the denial, someone needs to make a yes. A motion to approve. Okay. So one of you that voted yes, probably. You got to say yes to approve it? So yeah, we're, 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 we're approving the denial? So right now it's been, the motion to deny has been defeated. defeated. Did I say no? Or so we have to have I thought I said yes. Yeah. Didn't I say so, yes? So then either Ed, Okay. Do you know or need a motion? Melinda need to make a motion? I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Melinda. To approve. A motion to approve. So we need a motion to approve. I will so wait, wait, why, make why that motion. I have an objection with okay. this. Okay. I don't. Well, she's going to make the motion to approve. I don't agree with the POB, but uh, they're going to get the license. Someone's going to get it. We have a motion to approve on the floor from Belinda. Do we so have a second? So we're doing a motion to approve? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Someone willing to second. Who's going to second it? You're going to second it? What's that? We have, we have a motion, motion to approve on the floor from Melinda. We're looking for a second. Neither of you looks super sick. I'm having trouble hearing you. We, we need a second to on the motion to approve. We, we do not have a second right now to that motion. We're approving what? This is a motion to approve, the, to recommend the special use to council. So there's a motion to approve now. We need a second 
before we can vote. So someone has made the motion. Okay. Correct. I'm Belinda. Sorry. Belinda has made the motion. Okay. I'm lost. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I I'm all for it. Okay. So second to that motion. Yeah. Am I allowed to make the motion? Or you can second? you can second it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Dino Ori. Yes. Don Tippett? No. Ed Zosky? Yes. Gina Driscoll? No. Belinda Young? Yes. Okay. Democracy in action? Absolutely. I guess. So this Absolutely. will go to City Council? Correct. Okay, last case, uh, Come on. 20 v. 30, uh, petition of Rex and Joel McMorris for a special, uh, for a setback variance of two feet to allow for the placement of a paved area on property located at 101 Regal Lane. Will significant hardship result to the owner if a strict letter of the regulations are carried out given the particular physical surrounding shape, poverty conditions of the property? I'm a no. 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 Was no. that a no? No. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. I mumbled. So, no? No. Is it an inconvenience to the property owner to follow the regulations of the ordinance? It's probably an inconvenience. Yes. 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 Did you get it? Okay. Yep. Is the variance requested based on the uniqueness of the property? No. 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 Is the uh, variance based exclusively on the desire to make more money out of the property? No. 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 Uh, will the variance be injurious to other properties or improvements in the neighborhood? No. No, no. Uh, not necessarily. No, I wouldn't think so. Um, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say I'm yes. Gonna, I, I, I've got two people no. that are pondering, I can tell. No. Right. I'm going to say yes just because of the possibility. Because somebody else said there. no. Okay, so two yeses with three no's, so we'll go with the no. Has the alleged difficulty or hardship been created somebody by any persons presently having an interest in the property and thus self-imposed? That's a definite yes. Oh, self-imposed? Yes. Yes. Does everyone agree that it's a yes? Yes. 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 Will the proposed variation impair the adequate supply of light and air to adjacent properties? No. 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 Will the proposed no. variation increase congestion on public streets? No. 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 Uh, the, no. Will the proposed variation create additional traffic safety problems? No. 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 Will the proposed variation increase the danger of fire to adjacent structures? No. No. Will the proposed variance substantially diminish or impair property values with the immediate neighborhood? No. 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 Will the variance be detrimental to or endanger public health, safety, morals, comforts, or general welfare? No. 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 Will the variance request be general actual other properties with the immediate area? No. 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 Okay, discussion or a motion. What are the other ones? Uh, might mention number one, there's no hardship. It makes it pretty simple. Could still pay over additionally without. Right. Are you making an emotion to deny? 
No, I'm just mentioning that number one is a no, which generally makes it for a denial. <laughs> if you can't if you can't get a, a yes on number one, everything else is immaterial. Okay. I'll make a motion to deny the request. I'll second it. That's that on the second. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Roll call. Dino Ori. Yes. Don Tippett. Yes. Ed Zosky. Yes. Gina Driscoll. Yes. Melinda Young. Yes. Let's go on. Piece of business. Uh, so, new business. You want to? You, did you want to discuss that tonight, or wait till? Real briefly, we can we can run through it. I, I yeah. think, given the the size of the packet this month, there's there's a couple of things we want to talk to the board about. One has to do with uh, how we distribute those out. Uh, everybody here has some sort of an electronic uh, communication. Um, what we'd like to propose is that we would we would email the packets to each of you if. Those, uh, there are those of you that would still want a hard copy. We can still have a packet printed up and, and available here at City Hall for you to come and pick up. Uh, we'll bring larger attachments if we need to the meetings. We're going to try to use a little more with the on screen. Uh, that seems to work relatively well. It's not the greatest resolution in some cases, but at least gives everybody in the audience, including the board, here's an a idea of what we're looking at and everybody can look at it together. Is that Zoom? Well, we're, yeah, we've got Zoom right now with Willinda on. Actually, we've got her, got her covered up. Again. Oh, I'm sorry. And is there some kind of like a laser pointer or something we could yes, get we, we that can, we could we'll, we'll point properties get one and or, stuff? Yeah, we'll try to find one around City Hall. Without a laser pointer, I've been trying to get it to work, but it's, it's not. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. just me not knowing. How you can do it. On, yeah, we, Zoom, we can do it. But on even Zoom a physical one, we so we it, could. Yeah, because that was really nice. Some of the properties and things was. Yeah, so we'll, we'll try to do more of that, but if the board's okay with that, we'd like to start that sooner than later. I don't know if you saw that the packet oh, yeah. costs were pretty pricey. So when we're home, we can see see ourselves or see this or both? Yeah, so, so pretty much everything that, I mean, short of, I mean, I did bring up the GIS maps, so that would be something that you would have to do again. That's just going to the city's website, www.cityspeoria.com, go to the government section, go to departments, then my GIS link is right in the middle of the Everything Lynn showed tonight is it's publicly accessible. Yeah, it is. Today. All those property lines? Yeah, okay. so all that part of So you just go, the one app you need to click on is the city search app. That one tends to have most of the property information. Now there is a zoning one, so if you need to know about uh, the current zoning or surrounding zonings, there's a, a map that is the zoning map as well. Um, and that has all that information. That also has uh, pre-existing uh, ZBA cases associated with the properties is also on that. So we're gonna, we'd like to start that next month if it's okay with the board, we'll see how it works. Like I said, if you want a printed packet, we'll still have them available uh, that you can come down and pick up. Otherwise, we'll email everybody with the, the information. We, I'm curious whether we could Excuse figure me? a way of training on one. Training on? The Zoom situation. Well, so we would, we would send, as the, the, you see the packet printed out today, that would be sent out to you and it's in complete If format. I bring my laptop in here and sit down. Oh, to be able to look at the cases on, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can set you up with that because as long as we can get access to your email, there is public Wi-Fi in here so everybody can, can bring their laptops with them Zoom if they want. Is that what it's called, Zoom? Well, the Zoom is really just being used for uh, members that are participating remotely. We're so otherwise, Zoom is the, is the, the is what yeah, but I mean, you can use yeah, it sitting here, even email. though we... You wouldn't need to. I know you wouldn't, but oh. just to get used to using it, oh, you could yeah. sit here with a computer. You used to hand deliver yeah. these. What happened to our hand delivery man? We hand delivered because the post office was really poor. <laughs> <by the laughs> really? So, but yeah, no, we, yeah. could, we could bring the computer we'll, with we'll us if we stayed, look. if we were here, and use the Zoom. I will, make that, I will make that offer to you right here, right now, that I will be here, I stay after, I will be here at 5 o'clock, that on the next one, if you would like to, I will gladly walk you through. Well, I did a here. I did a class a, about three four classes with Zoom from. Yeah, the, this wouldn't be Zoom. I mean, what, you, you get your packet. Oh, it's a different a one. Yeah, you get, you just get it. I think we're talking about two different things. Yes. Yeah. So Zoom is you wouldn't have to worry about Zoom at all. And Zoom is just what I pull up on this computer so that Belinda can participate by because she's not here in person. Right. Everything else I pulled up was just the internet. And like a word document. Well, so we're talking about just using 
a program or a, a yeah, software right. to. Yeah, you'd get an email that would just have a PDF with all the cases in it. We can we can discuss this further. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and, and wrap let's up go the home meeting. And, and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll kind of hammer out the details. Pass my bedtime. Do you have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> motion to adjourn. I'll second that. I'll second that. There you go. <laughs> all those in favor say aye. Out aye. there it is. Aye. Good night. I don't want to ask for any opposition. Yeah. <laughs> this concludes the October or the September 2020 meeting of the East Bureau Zoning Board of Appeals.